I can see that. Do you have a way to... He said you can select it as unlisted. Kimball? Can you hear? Okay, Kimball. Well, YouTube world. Sorry. No, you're good. People keep apologizing to me. <laughs> and I'm, uh, assume I'm in the way. Can you hear me? Is this what you're, were you looking for me to speak? This is Fun to Set a Road, live on YouTube. Or maybe not. But probably. Kimball, is this a little better? It was clipped to my cap. I don't think we've adjusted any settings on this right now. He says it's better. Well, after uh, a one hour delay, here we are at Pondicetta, live for Pondicetta Road at Drink and Ink. 12 p.m. Mountain Time. We never specify this, the time zone. It's true. Upon Decetta, we usually don't specify a time zone on purpose. A little flexibility. Um, it looks like we have made it through three tattoos already, and we have a list that is a mile long. But I still want to encourage anybody who's interested, they're moving really fast, come in and get signed up to get a tattoo. But if not, enjoy the commentary on the live stream. So our first attempt at going live, and naturally there were some difficulties. <laughs> Kimball says we're doing great, so that's really comforting. I mean, I don't believe him one bit, but... I'll take it. Thanks, Kimball. Um, Alex Cunningham, if you're out there, you can now watch us live. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, they are getting set up for the next round of tattoos. We've got our next um, clients ready to go. They're getting their transfers ready and wrapping their equipment. Hey, Alex. It's so, uh, a nice view of some backsides. So, for those of you who haven't been in a tattoo studio, sanitation and cleanliness is huge, and we're able to replicate that here over on the brewery side of our operation. Uh, but each time they change to a, a new client, they're rewrapping all their gear, getting everything set up and ready. So this event that we're doing right now um, is called Drink and Ink at Pondicetta. We've got artists from 8th Ave Tattoo Shop here in Amarillo, Texas, um, and they are doing live tattooing here at the brewery. And the whole point of this event is to bring people together, some different communities, different groups of people, um, and enjoy a couple of beers and um, do some, some art. Um, 
Trevor and I actually got our very first tattoos uh, last summer, and so it's been something we've been wanting to do for a long time, but um, we got Pondaceta tattoos, so we have the yucca uh, tattooed on our arms, and now we are able to actually offer that as an option for um, any of our customers or fans or friends to be able to come do that here at the brewery, which is a really cool environment to be able to get something done. It's a really exciting space right now. We've got probably 50 plus people in the building. Everybody is trying to uh, get their spot on the list and basically it's first come first serve. So um, we've already made it through three. Uh, we're about to start the fourth tattoo and James is getting ready to start the fifth tattoo. Um, James Glenn is actually one of the artists. He's um, a close friend of mine from childhood. We've known each other for almost our entire lives. Uh, he's been a tattoo artist now for what, three years? Three and change, and so uh, he's currently uh, working over at 8th Ave Tattoo, um, and our other artist is Allie, um, and she's at 8th Avenue as well. He already had that. No, I know. That's okay. What I'm <laughs> I was like, he's already had that thing. One of the coolest things we just learned is that uh, one of our clients for today at the tattoo uh, event is actually a regular customer, and he already had a Pondaset of Yucca tattoo. <laughs> So for, um, for today's event, anybody who chooses to get a Pondaceta Yucca logo tattoo is actually going to get a free beer today after they complete their tattoo. And then um, from here on out, they're going to get 10% off their own draft beers. A little bit of fine print on that is we can't overserve you ever, and you can't be drunk when you get your tattoo now. But um, we do have uh, the ability to give you guys a discount on the beers you order for yourself uh, down the road. So encourage everybody who's interested and wants to support the brand to come get Pondaceta logo. We have a couple of different versions and they all count. So um, it's a small investment for a permanent piece of art showing your love for us at Pondaceta, but also really exciting because you can get some discounts and cool stuff. We're just going to... Yeah, we've done four. Or this is the fourth. <clears throat> um, so the artists have created about five pages of Flash. Uh, and Flash is like a pre-made design that you can just come and pick from rather than bringing in your own custom art. And so um, while at a shop or a normal arrangement, you could you know, have an artist come you know, custom draw a very specific and unique piece just for you. At events like this, it's hard to be able to do a bunch of custom art because there's so many people who want to get um, a little bit of ink today. So uh, that means we've got some predefined pieces. Um, we had hoped to be able to accommodate some custom work, but realistically, it's just not going to be feasible for today's event because we're so busy. So um, we've got a lot of beer-themed uh, art here, including some hops. Uh, one of my favorite uh, designs they've got is uh, a draft faucet, so like what you serve beer out of. Um, we've got some Fonda Seta lo uh, logo options like we mentioned. We've got like some six packs and some Pit Viper sunglasses, but then we've got some classic tattoo art like, um, you know, um, flaming eight balls and, you know, uh, burning the candle at both ends. There's some cool stuff. We'll show you guys here in a little bit some of those pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so James is about ready to grab the fifth, um, the fifth client. He's uh, taking a quick coffee break. So uh, naturally, as the owners of the brewery hosting this event, Trevor and I are going to sneak in and get some tattoos here in a bit, too. Um, we kind of make the list, so we don't have to be on the list, I don't think. It looks pretty long right now. <laughs> but the list is long and growing. It's on the second sheet. Yeah, but we're moving through pretty quickly, so. All right, we had a brief audio break there, but Trevor is now studying the flash sheets carefully. You might be able to see him in the background here. He is looking at what he wants to put on his body for the rest of his life. Bottle cap on the cheek, I think that's a good idea. All right, so right now James is positioning the stencil, and the stencil is what makes the, these tattoos go so quickly, and that's the way almost all tattoos are done anyways. I mean, you can freehand stuff, but um, you know it's pretty standard to have that going. Um, it's getting her prepped up, and he's gonna put that stencil right where it goes. Um, she'll have an opportunity to check and make sure she likes the position. Um, and then he'll start. James, is it harder to uh, tattoo her arm when she's gonna have to hold it up in an interesting position? Or will she be able to lay her arm down while you do it? So he's saying he's comfortable with it, with her arm straight up and down. If it were a longer tattoo, he might change his mind, but he can also reposition his armrest just to make her comfortable and make comfortable and ergonomic for him to actually, um, you know, work through the design. 
Um, looks like we had a question about are we going to be uh, hosting this event again in the future, and absolutely. Um, it's already been pretty successful, we would say, and it's fun to have um, an exciting morning, you know, pretty right off the bat for us. So um, we don't have a future date planned, but our goal right now is going to be to host something like this a, a few times a year. So for sure, uh, come summer, we'll be doing it again. Six pack. <laughs> I mean, if you had it, it was like passing me. I really like, I said this earlier, but my favorite design from these flash sheets is the, um, the faucet. I just am not prepared to put a beer faucet on my body yet. I mean, it's kind of, you're planning out your, your future designs. It's something you've got to think about is how you position it and where it goes and how it fits with everything else. I do like the sugar skulls, both of those. The pizza is kind of funny. Yeah. All right, we just wrapped up client number four. Um, like we said, it's actually moving really fast. So each time they um, finish a client, they've got to reset their station, um, re-sanitize, re-wrap everything, and they're also going to get IDs and waivers uh, completed from the client. The leaf's kind of cool. And I can like the maple leaf too. I mean the weed's cool. I don't know what to do. Maybe you should take a can you do a poll? Oh, that's a great idea. Trevor just asked if we should poll the audience to see what design he should put on his body for the rest of his life. Don't tell his mom. I was actually thinking the same. So yeah, position-wise, I mean, I think it's cool when it hangs just under, you know, half out of the sleeve. I wore my coat off shoes. Nice. So I could show my I noticed you uh, <laughs> were layered up. Yes, sir. And he was asking about the tattoo that gets you a discount or something like mm -hmm. that. Which one is that specifically? The Yucca, the Panda set of Yucca logos okay. get a discount, um, whether it be in the circle or the standalone, okay. or the one that is the Texas that says Panda set of. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure so I didn't spread any misinformation. No, appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Actually, I think, I think somebody got that design just a minute ago. I forgot about that sheet. Sort of like traditional designs. I mean, I'm genuinely tempted to get the Pit Viper silhouette. I brought some shorts so I could go, you know, thigh position if needed. Nobody will ever see that.
Oh yeah, that's a that's a good neutral one, I think. Hey, will you will you send Kimball a picture of the numbered ones or like all of the numbers? Just like a each one. Well. So every once in a while we have to ask our producer a question. Kimball, do you have all of the flash designs? Oh no, you're good. I'm sorry guys. Didn't mean to crowd you. Sorry. He has he says he has he just doesn't have the numbers. They added the numbers today. All right, so we've had some questions about, I know we've talked about one of our artists, James Glenn. Um, our other artist is Allie Lyles. Uh, you can follow her art on Instagram at Alexandria the Great, and that's with four T's at the end. She's a tattoo artist at 8th Avenue Tattoo. Uh, she specializes in American traditional design. Um, got a bunch of cool art, and she did um, a couple of the flash sheets. Um, we'll post those in the chat here in a minute so people can check that out a little bit too. So um, this tattoo event is going to go, started at noon, and it'll last until 6 p.m. The artist will stay maybe a couple of minutes after to try to wrap up a few last-minute sign-ups. Um, but if you want to get some fresh ink, you definitely need to get on the list early. Um, we've got quite a few names on the list already. But we're actively working on client number six and client number five. Looks like we've got um, client number six is getting a Yaka logo. I think he's just in it for the beer. It's fun, right? Try to pass the microphone around for a minute, but um, I immediately got it handed back to me. You guys are stuck with my narration. Do you guys think that that's his only tattoo? I mean, if so, cool and bold. I mean, our first tattoos were the Yucca logo. It's true. She wants to be like us. Yeah. Yeah, I remember on our first tattoo that, that the gun he was using seemed very loud at the time. It was a old school one. It was so like intimidating, like just you hear the sound of the gun. Nick, our marketing and media manager, was just telling a story about he'd gotten some tattoos with the older style tattoo guns and they're noisy and intimidating and you hear the sound and it just adds to a bit of like 
the impact of the whole thing. But then when you get one done with some of these newer, quiet machines, uh, <laughs> it's hard to wonder. You wonder if it's even working at times, but it's it's doing the job. Okay, James was just explaining to us that you're not actually even hearing the machine or the battery pack or anything like that. You're actually hearing the needle move in the cartridge. Um, they can use, they can take Venmo or Cash App as well as cash. <clears throat> Most artists at, in, at all shops, not probably not true for every single situation, but are independent contractors and you actually will pay your artist directly and it's pretty common to uh, leave a tip similar to your bartenders. Which we always recommend, tip your bartenders, tip your tattoo artists. As Dwight Schrute says, and your urologist. <laughs> Thank you.
kind of like the skull with the top beard, but... <clears throat> Alright, so we've been discussing what, what pieces we were going to put on ourselves. What are you thinking, Trevor? I think I've narrowed it down to bottle cap or the wheat. We were talking about this um, when we were looking at the flash sheets. Maybe it was that two days ago. So, like, I kind of miss drinking out of, like, long neck bottles. It's like craft beers moved 100% to cans these days. So drink out of cans somewhat regularly. And obviously prefer to pour it out of the glass, into a glass. But just remember back in the early days of getting into craft beer, everything was in bottles. first, but I don't really, I haven't decided. Bit my birds. Where would I put it? On your neck. Well, seems like good real estate, well, small real estate for my bicep, but. Uh, <laughs> On your bottom. Tramp stamp pit viper sunglass silhouette. Yeah. All right, so for those of you guys just tuning in, we're here at Drinkin' Ink at Pondicetta. It's our first time ever hosting a live tattooing event here at the brewery. We know some other breweries who have hosted these in the past, and it's always been a lot of fun, it sounded like. Uh, Trevor and I got our first tattoos last summer and have been wanting to do something like this ever since where we could actually get tattooed at our brewery. You know, it's sort of like our home away from home, or sometimes our home of, you know, primarily, it seems like at times. But um, so uh, we've got this event going. It started at noon. It goes until uh, 6 p.m. The artist may wrap up a couple people at the end, but um, there is a sign-up list. It is first come, first serve. There's a lot of people on this list, but there's still room for more people. Uh, we've finished uh, six people so far, and the artists are getting ready for the next people. you guys the uh, make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook uh, to see all of the events we have going on we're always doing something at the brewery some of it's weird and exciting stuff like drinking and ink and sometimes it's simple as uh, live music with an acoustic performer or a full band at times and other times we're doing big ticketed events for beer dinners and food pairing and all that stuff so make sure you're following us uh, oh, nice. <laughs> James just pointed out that he's got um, one of his clients here from uh, his shop, and they uh, did a big tattoo yesterday on his shoulder. Alright guys, so I'm going to be next in James's chair, um, Caleb that is. K-A-L-E-B. <laughs> um, we'll get somebody uh, here in a couple of minutes and they'll show off their fresh ink on camera and, and maybe get a little bit of talking about it. What are you going with? <laughs> Caleb looks 
very nervous about what he wants to get. What's the verdict, Caleb? I think I'm going to get the skull with the hot beard. Skull with hot beard. Number 15. It'll be on your li body for the rest of your life. Are you okay with this decision? <laughs> he says, Ew. Looks like um, the second si sign up sheet is almost full. And we're probably quarter of the way through the first one. So looks like uh, the event is going very well. Where is the positioning of the tattoo going to be, Caleb? On your muscly biceps. <laughs> I feel like that was rude and unnecessary. I think I'm going to go just poking out of the bottom of my shirt sleeve on my left arm. All right. Well, now that I have the mic, Trevor, that is, I don't know if I can fill up time as much as Caleb does. But that's okay. Today, our first beers are a couple of Raz Beckys, which is our raspberry blonde ale um, it's very easy to drink very light but great raspberry flavor we do it usually once or twice a year So our original Blondell was called Becky. Um, sort of an inside joke. Just always say everyone knows a Becky. It uh, could be co comparable to a Karen, but maybe not as a little younger, I would say. I don't know. But uh, sorry if your name's Becky. We don't, we don't mean to offend you. But uh, so we do like watermelon Becky, Raz Becky, We've done Cape Cod, Becky. Um, what else have we done? Blueberry? We didn't do blueberry. Blackberry. We've done, we do one called Kofefe. Were you uh, talking to her right here in front of the camera about her tattoo? Yes. All right. All right, if you don't mind st st talk, showing the tattoo to this camera right here. This was done, scoot back just a little bit. There, right there. So I noticed it when you walked by that it looks super fresh. But uh, tell us why you picked this tattoo. Um, because I like flowers and I'm going to get a flower sleeve. So it's part of my sleeve. Awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. Yeah turned out real nice yeah so she said she's gonna keep going sleeve with the flowers that'd be pretty cool thank you Caleb are you nervous no I don't think so okay I feel like now that I have two I'm a professional <laughs> Caleb and I both I don't know if he mentioned this earlier also have stick and poke tattoos done by our friend Amy at Brick Vault Brewing uh, in, uh, what city is it in? What town is it in? Brick Vault, uh, something Gage Hotel, is it uh, Fort Davis? Got it. Got it started with an A. Alpine. 
Is that right? Marathon. Marathon. There we go. We were way off. <laughs> I mean, it's all right there. Yeah. Slippy, slappy, swami. Samsonite. All right, so James just had a little impromptu meeting right there uh, talking about um, some custom design work and how that process works for them and what they're doing. So he said it like, usually takes a $100 deposit to book an appointment and start working on the design. Um, that, that $100 deposit applies to the tattoo work that he does. And so going to work together from there to figure out a time and how, how they're going to put it all together. Well said, Caleb. I was also talking about we take this Becky Blonde recipe and add coffee, and it's like a coffee blonde, really light, but has real nice, smooth coffee flavor. It's always a popular one when we release it. Nick, tell us what's coming up this week at Ponda Seta. Uh, Big Bang Theory trivia on Monday night. Um, after that, we got some live music on Wednesday. Can't remember who off the top of my head. No offense to the artists. Um, and then we got our adult Easter egg hunt. Oh, Tom Sless. Uh, he's traveling through from Fort Worth. Uh, we got our adult Easter egg hunt on Saturday, which is sure to be uh, pretty crazy. It was pretty wild last year. People were like waiting outside the door and like pushed the people opening the door down just to get in here. Yeah, we were hoping to learn from that last year and be a little more organized, but I feel like it's going to be busier than it was. So all we can do is hope. That's right. Seven-day agenda, drink beer. <laughs> Usually that's how that works. Yeah. Watch a little day watch. <laughs> I think my favorite Becky is probably Raz Becky. What about you? Absolutely. Raz Becky is by far my favorite. Hogan? Favorite beer? Becky. Becky? Oh, uh, favorite Becky, probably Tropical. Oh, I forgot about Tropical Becky. Yeah, okay. I was a big fan of Watermelon Becky myself. Okay. I, I do like the Coffee Blonde, though. That one's pretty good. Uh, yeah, Coffee V's good. Um, Becky's Brunch Beer is how I refer to that one. I just think that the, um, the Raz Becky, raspberry brings in a like, touch of acidity, and like the fruit just blends so well with beer flavor. Like, that's, my, that's why it's my personal favorite. We did make an early, early test batch of watermelon Becky, aka Water Becky, that was amazing with fresh watermelon, but we never had the capacity to like process tons of fresh watermelon to use that um, in the full-scale environment. It was always only on a pilot level. And so when we tried to use like watermelon concentrate or fresh watermelon juice uh, like purchased from a supplier, it always had like a squash gourd like vegetable flavor and I never thought it was as good as it should be. It deserved to be better. It was more like eating the rind or you know it didn't have that real fruity yeah. juicy flavor. Almost like a hint of cucumber. Right. How about the Beckiest? Beckiest is very delicious also. It's a pumpkin spice latte Becky. It comes out um, in the fall and it's got a little coffee, a little Vanilla. It's your Ugg boot beer. Ugg boots beer. Yoga pants and Ugg boots. Caleb was talking about that. <laughs> so exciting news on the Canyon location. Um, they ha have put up the metal frame of the new brewery building and also have two walls up with um, the skin or the outside panels. So it's looking really nice. Um, we're gonna keep keep updating on our Pondaceta page on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, working on a video to show you guys 
on our YouTube channel, Pondicetta Road, which you're probably watching right now. So, video update is coming very soon. So check out our new video that we dropped this morning. Um, we're working on a new shoot this week and then working on some new content for April. So pretty excited about that. Now I have my Fancy Bob Barker mic, hello. Hopefully you guys can still hear it. If it's muffled, maybe our producer will let me know. So out of our new videos, I think so far, the Dune one was pretty fun because I normally don't like Sangria and uh, it turned out really cool. But some of our older videos, the shorts, I think the one where we did uh, next, what was it? Next Top Chef or something? Where we had Gordon Ramsay, Guy Fieri, Chip and Joanna Gaines played by all of us here. And Nick was... Uh, what was your guy? Dave Dave Franco. Oh, yeah. Dave Franco, yeah. He was the host. So check one check that one out. We used to do really silly, dumb stuff and we still do, but uh that one was one of my favorites. Check that one out, guys. So Caleb's over here off camera getting prepped up, shaving his hairy arms. <laughs> getting his bulging muscles ready for bulging tattoos. Triceps. Him and James are gonna rest, arm wrestle here in a second. And if you haven't seen James's arms yet, they're as big as both my legs put together. <laughs> Caleb, on the other hand, <laughs> not so much. The, the laughter is really but, he, cool. but he's tall and lanky, so he can wrap you up like a python. That's right. What do you think? Yeah, it looks pretty good. If I drop the sleeve, will it mess up the stencil? Just do it gently. You said your normal one will be a little higher, so that should be perfect. Looks like the beard is sticking yeah. out just the bottom. Yeah, looks, looks good to me. Good. Yep, nice and straight. You gonna fix that little guy? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it the other day. Also, uh, unbeknownst to me, Kimball, our producer, put a new video of me saying biscuit multiple times in various speeds. It was slightly embarrassing, but very comical. Thanks, Kimball. We have any votes on the poll? Yeah. 40% bottle cap, 40% Pit Viper and 20% wheat. All right. I think I'm still filling the bottle cap, but unless the poll changes, and I still might do what y'all might not do what you vote on anyway. <laughs> it's my body, not yours. So right now we have a new New England style IPA called Master of Your Domain, based, <laughs> based off a Seinfeld episode. Um, if you don't know what it is, you should look it up because it's pretty funny. Anyway, it's very soft, um, nice hazy 
good fruit notes from the hops. Um, it, it turned out really, really great, which uh, we have. Our Fast and Hazy is our core beer house, Hazy IPA. And in my opinion, Master Beer Domain is, is better than that one. But we sell a lot of Fast and Hazy, so I don't know. I guess the, the public has spoken. All right, you can see Caleb here now getting prepped up on the table. He looks a little nervous now. His face is a little red. He's shaking the he's shaking the the bench. <laughs> James said if the tattoo's bad then it's Caleb's fault for shaking so much. John, our tap room manager, he says he wants to sit in. He hasn't tatted in 13 years, but he's he says it's like riding a bike. He can still do it. I mean, I suck at it then. I suck at it now. It is what it is. I bet you could do it. Uh, maybe. I don't have to live with it though. Caleb does. Right. <laughs> How you feeling, champ? You know, um, when you sit down in the chair, it is a little different. I mean, feels like there's a little pressure. I got to sit still. I kind of also realized I drank all my beer, and I want another beer, but I don't know if that's, you know, kosher. I mean, I'm sure you could ask the owners. And and your artist is right there. He, he probably wouldn't care. Speaking of which, I need a drink. What kind of beer you want? I'd like a master of your domain, please. Consider it done. And here's Nick with some updates. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be taking over the mic for a temporary second. Trevor is going to go retrieve us a couple of beers, and I'm just uh, in here monitoring the YouTube live while Caleb's about to... Get his tattoo. What'd you What'd you decide on, Caleb? All right, all right. That's a good one. That's what I wanted. The skull with the hop. Been a pretty successful event so far, as you guys can see in the background. Pretty excited. Uh, other than the live stream taking a second to get going, been been pretty successful. Sorry, I'm not talking as much as the other guys. I'm multitasking over here. Always working. Keeping our social medias up to date. Caleb is officially underway. Yes. All right, we're going to do a little interview while we're, we're doing this. Kind of like hot ones, see how, how much further you can get into it. Uh, so how you feeling about the tattoo overall? I feel pretty good. And, you know, I got to be honest, I sat down and wasn't nervous at all until I sat down and I was like, oh man, I've only done this for real like one other time since the, the second tattoo was stick and poke. And that hurt so much worse than this hurts right now. The stick and poke, uh, Amy was great and I like shout out to Amy again, but um, that, 
that was just like being repeatedly stabbed with like uh, the tip of a knife and that didn't, you know, that didn't feel great. And I thought she was done and she just had to go over it again and again and again. So this feels familiar, just a little tickle. Like somebody told me right before we got the last one, it might've been Christian, but that uh, sort of like scratching a sunburn and you know, it's like a, a fair, like I'm certain there are places that hurt worse than what I'm getting right now, but like it's a fair description. It's not too bad. So I know you wanted to get something different before we started, but for time's sake, you went with a different design. Are you still going to go ahead and move forward with getting that one after this? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, I think anybody in the brewing industry will recognize what this term is, but it's a, a tri-clamp. It's actually one of the parts we use almost a thousand times a day to hook up hoses and to hook up parts on our tanks. And so just like a, an homage to brewing in general, um, it's cool mechanical looking design. So uh, James is going to work it up, you know, later for it's us to do like it a future date. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, no, so James, James is just mentioning, I don't know if you can hear him, but he has a tattoo machine on the back of his head. And, um, Wrong, sir. I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> two tattoos, two tattoo machines, and, um, you know, so very similar, like, a, a, you know, call out to your, your industry and your lifeblood, if you will. So I'm still kind of excited about that. Definitely, yeah, that would be a really good one, especially in the spot you said you were going to get in. I'd like to see that, and I will want to watch you get that one as well, because from my own personal experience, it's a pretty painful spot. So we, uh, what we were talking about is yesterday we were discussing the possibility of me getting the tri-clamp, which is like a, a circular clamp design with a pivot point on one end so it opens and closes. And we said it'd be really cool to get that on an elbow so that you could open and close the tri-clamp. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not oh, come on. I, I'm not a afraid necessarily, maybe I should be, of the location. However, I just can't quite picture that spot and like fitting with my other tattoo on my like forearm and everything right now. I just worry that it's, it's going to look kind of unbalanced. But I guess if you're doing patchwork tattoos, that's kind of part of it. Yeah, as someone who has a patchwork sleeve, it, it definitely looks a little unbalanced and strange at, at different times. But once you get a couple big ones in there, it starts filling it in and starts to you know bring it together a little bit yeah i think it'll all depend on how james feels and once he draws it up a little bit and we see you know we may play with we were playing with the stencil position over here just a second ago before i sat down on the chair and i mean i think that'll be important on that one it's like we'll probably have to reposition that stencil a couple of times if i were guessing just in terms of getting it in the right spot thank you yep for sure man well, uh, Trevor's back. Let's see if he has any questions to ask you, because uh, the beer he brought me looks pretty tasty. It looks like, if I had to guess, a master of your domain, and I could correct. use one. You are correct, sir. Well, how you feeling? Pretty good. Uh, you know, a little tingle, a little, uh, little scratching. You know, it's all right. Sweet. Looking good. All right, yeah. So he's already got the hot beard done, working on the mustache. This one, this one won't take long at all. James said Caleb's actually sitting still. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm, I'm worried that since James said I was sitting still, all of a sudden I'm going to start moving because I'm like, going to start thinking about it, you know? Like when I'm getting a haircut and they're like fit trimming around and you, you're like, your, your mind wants to tell you to move real fast. Fast. Sir, I see you have a skull tattoo. Sir, I see that your head is covered with tattoos. <laughs> All right. Is that? It's because I'm a crazy person. <laughs> what is the estimated cost of this gun setup you have here? This is actually uh, not an expensive machine. It's a great machine, but I think this only ran me about 280 or so. 
Yeah. I mean, you can spend easily spend fifteen hundred dollars on a high dollar like a name brand machine. This is like a clone of a really nice machine, but they all come from the same place. Like, so you're you're, you're paying for the name. Yeah, exactly. And I chose to not pay for the name because it's. I mean, they're identical basically. So, yeah, right I think this is about set me back two eighty or something. Okay, not bad at all. And like, it is super super quiet. You can't even hear it right now. Yeah, these rotary pins are, like I said, mostly you're just hearing the needle and the cartridge right there making a little bit of noise, but the pins themselves are, they're almost silent. Super quiet. All right, so I'm going to go over here again. Has our pole changed at all, uh, Nick? has we're tied at 33 percent for all three options oh okay so what does that mean not very many people <laughs> i think i'm still aiming towards the bottle cap it looks pretty cool James, the people want to know, how many tattoos do you approximately have? <laughs> approximately. Well, do, you just, know, uh, do you know the real number? I, think, I don't know the real number. I've had people try to count. I think the last time someone tried to count, I know they missed some, and they got to like 70, high 70. So I'm assuming 80, 80 something. I'm trying to just make it all. Yeah, one piece, yeah. It's about 80. I feel like if you're trying to count that, do you count each individual star see, on your filler? No, and no, we don't. And see, that's the hard part. Is how do you really? And like this was all done in one sitting, so this is really one tattoo. Like, yeah. so that makes it hard. But I also had a ten-year-old counting them, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Moving along, looks like about halfway down the sheet, and eh, maybe not quite halfway. So they've done 10. These two people with Caleb will be 12, it looks like. Moving along pretty good. So right now, we have a, a Saison that we added pink peppercorn and hibiscus, but it is only gonna be released to the Pondicetta Club. So that will start in the summer, a renewal, a renewals in the summer. So if you wanna get some cool, exciting beers that we release, barrel-aged stuff, crazy fruit, um, we just released a maple, maple X bourbon barrel uh, stout, super good. But you can only get that if you are a Pondicetta Club member. Check that out on our website, pondicetta.com. Let's see, what else we have coming out? Right now in the tank is pretty much our core beers because we cannot keep up with those. So that's why we are building a new brewery in Canyon. Um, coming up this week, we're going to brew an oldie but goodie called Trash Panda. Um, super hoppy. I don't know. We haven't brewed it in three years probably. Yeah. Um, the label's really cool. Alex did that one, right? Nick's wife, Alex, drew a, a Trash Panda logo. I mean, obviously, it's a raccoon coming out of a trash can with hops all around it. It's it's really cool lo uh, label. All right, let's so check it out. We're debating whether we should fill Dang, the eyes that's clean. black at the eyes and the nose, or if we should just leave them empty, or maybe fade it a little bit. Do a nice thing. I think a fade would look really cool. Yeah. There. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, we're going to modify Caleb's just a little bit. 
He's going to fade in the eyes of the skull. <clears throat> Anything, uh, it, John, could you have done it better? No. I, John, can, John can fill stuff in. How's your pain? How's your pain right now, Caleb? You know, um, when it started, I couldn't, like, I, I, people say this, I couldn't really feel it much, meaning I, like, I knew he was doing it, but it didn't, it didn't irritate. As he got higher, I definitely felt a little more, like, a little sharper, a little scratchier. Um, yeah. So I can feel it, but I'm not, I'm not miserable. Good, good. I know on mine I got uh, the Ponticetta yucca on my inside bicep, and the top of the yucca started feeling like he was tattooing in my armpit. It was a little, little sensitive, but not, not too bad. All right, he changed out his needle. Nice. He's going to do a little pepper shade in the eyes. So did you have to change to a different size needle, or how does that work? I used, yeah, I used a 11 round liner to get a fairly nice chunky outline on this. But since we're going to be doing this little fade, this pepper shade in here, you take it down to either like a three round liner or a five round liner, a very small needle, and you turn the voltage all the way down on the machine, and you essentially just whip it so it tracks, you know, it creates dots in it. Great to nice effect. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go try to go over here, interview this other person getting tattooed. Hello, Hello. I'm Trevor. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Trevor, I'm Haley. Nice to meet you. So tell us, we're on, uh, you're live on Pondicetta Road, our YouTube channel. Um, can you tell us what you got here? Um, so we have the piece to a revolver. It's got one bullet left in the chamber, and it says, your turn. <laughs> awesome. I like that one. I think it's pretty awesome. This is like my spooky leg with some bad things on there, so I thought it would be a good addition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's looking really nice. <laughs> and she got the little Pondicetta. She got the little Pondicetta thing. Oh, on. nice. She got a Pondicetta logo. Heck yeah. Welcome to the club. Beer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything for free beer. Well, cool. We're glad you glad you made it out. Yeah, absolutely. My friend is from uh, Tyler. She flew in for this. So. Oh, really? Flew in from Tyler. That's pretty awesome. Well, cool. Awesome. Well, glad you, glad you guys came out. Y'all have a good one. It's great. It's a good time. All right. So he's getting a little shade over here. It's turning out real nice. So he's kind of just making straight lines like this. And it's like making little dots. Yeah, it looks good. I think once, uh, once she's done, we're gonna find find her friend from Tyler, see if we can talk to her and ask her why she came here <laughs> from Tyler, Texas. She said her friend came from Tyler, yeah. All right, so it looks as though we are on to the third page of people, which is awesome. I think there's... 25 slots per page or something like that. So we're on the third page. It's going to be a long day for James. <laughs> Sir James. So we have a full house right now here at Pondicetta. Uh, people are trickling out to the patio. It's a pretty nice day. It's a little windy. My watch says it's 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, 
This morning I went to a golf tournament caddy for my son and it was not 58 degrees. It was windy and 30 and very cold. All right. He's going to he's going to wipe off Caleb's tat, clean him up real nice. Look at those guns. You both must work out. Where are they? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it turned out really nice. With your arm relaxed, so it looks like it's supposed to. There you go. Oh, taking a picture of myself. Okay, Grandpa. Yeah, it like looks it? clean. Yeah, I like that a lot. Thanks, dude. I'm really yeah, pumped. Man. Of course. Anytime, brother. So, we have done live streams in the past, uh, never on our YouTube channel because we didn't have a YouTube channel, but we've done a few uh, live tastings for different beers that we released. Um, they seem to always do, be really, do really well for us. Um, but if there is a live stream that you would like us to do, a topic, a discussion, a lesson of some sort, you know, where Caleb and I sit down or our, our staff or, you know, Nick or whoever it might be, you know, if there's something that you guys want to learn about or know about or for us to talk about, which to give Caleb any excuse to talk a lot is, you know, always a good thing. So uh, let us know down here in the comments uh, what you guys think. All right, Caleb's all done. How'd it go, Caleb? You know, I think it went pretty well. I feel excited. It, it was pretty Shaking fast. Like a leaf. It was oh, no. <laughs> it was like a moving target. <laughs> no, he said he said great. Did good. Great job. Do you want to take some more? I just, I think I just want to do the bottle cap, so okay. pretty easy. I mean, that one's easy, right? Pretty easy. Yeah, it'll be pretty quick. But yeah, just, just knock out a couple more. Okay. You let me know we'll do a more when you're ready. Years. Yeah, cool. Nope. I don't want them to think that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, folks, we own this place and we just have to sneak in. <laughs> but we are about to work on a few more people. Um, knock them out so it doesn't look like we're cutting which we kind of are but that's alright hey folks how are y'all doing hey, how are you? great I'm Trevor you're live on a YouTube channel we're just asking people what uh, what flash you're thinking about getting number nine okay what is can you explain that one to me Two cute flowers. <laughs> Two cute flowers. And how about you, sir? I'm getting number one. Number one, which is, oh, candle burning on both ends. Excellent. All right. Where are you guys on the list right now? Uh, the bottom. Very. Oh, okay. So, so you're going to just hang out all day and drink beer, right? Pretty much, yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming in. Y'all have a good day. And now back to Caleb. Here I am. The hostess with the mostest. The hostess with the mostest. That's yours. The wheat is winning. Oh no, the wheat is winning. 43. Weed. <laughs> wheat. 43%. I do kind of like the wheat. I don't know. I think y'all should vote bottle cap because. <laughs> I'm, because I'm going to rig this election. <laughs> the, electoral the electoral college decided to spot all cut. All right, now that I'm out of the chair, Caleb's back for just a minute. Um, we're going to let a few other of our uh, guests, Ponda Set of Customers, go next. Um, but I think it's a good time to pivot and talk about other events we have going on. I know the guys were talking about some of that upcoming stuff earlier. 
But um, one thing that we're really excited about, generally speaking, is that we do a um, new sangria every single week. You know, we're a brewery. We care the most about beer. Um, you ask us what we're doing at any point in time, it's probably talking about beer. Um, thinking about beer, making a beer, drinking a beer, goes on and on and on. But we recognize that um, not every single person drinks as much beer as us. And in fact, some people probably don't even drink beer at all, which is kind of weird. <laughs> uh, my co-hosts, Nick and Trevor, just shook their head and laughed like, how, how is it even possible? You know, says the guys who probably drink 13 beers a day every day sometimes. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. And w we also understand that work beers don't count. All that said, we do know that um, some people need to drink um, something else other than beer from a dietary need, and sometimes it's just a preference, right? And so we do um, a bunch of different sangria flavors, and honestly, it's a fun way for us to have a different creative outlet. Would you agree with that, Trevor? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about your favorite subject, sangria, and I was just thinking about how, like, there are things that we're willing to experiment with when it comes to sangria. We treat it as a wine-based cocktail. There's virtually zero rules. Um, but I think it's an interesting thing because it's a different creative outlet for us than beer. Like, we, we usually see beer as, like, some, some specific constructs. Right. Um, I think that uh, sangria is disgusting. Cool. Did that answer your question? <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, no, uh, I think what I mean by that is we have, um, we are absolutely all about celebrating some beer drinking holidays. For example, we recently passed St. Patty's Day. Had a huge weekend here at the brewery. Um, we released, what, five different beers throughout St. Patty's Week, including an Irish Red, an Irish Stout, and um, a Saison that we named after the patron saint of Saison, St. Sammy. That's all made up, but uh, still, a really fun beer for us, and all that's for the theme of St. Patty's Day. But one thing we didn't do at the brewery, and it's not because we think we're better than it, but we just didn't serve any green beer. But we were more than happy to make a green sangria. <laughs> um, and we called it Getting Lucky, and um, so we, we get to experiment with sangria is what I'm talking about, I guess. Our next sangria flavor comes out this coming Thursday. And here's an example of a way we like to have fun and do something a little a little out there. It's called Doin' Limes. And it is a coconut lime uh, white sangria. Uh, it is refreshing and tropical, uh, super easy to drink, but just a lot of fun and speaks to the changing seasons. Yeah, uh, they're still in sign-ups right now. But yeah, if you want to just jump over there and you can get, get on the list. Got more people uh, signing up and looking at all of our flash designs. Um, I'll be curious uh, how many we make it through today, but I mean, I think we're on a good pace. Um, so I called out some St. Patty's Day beers that we were doing, uh, or that we have done, and are available now on draft here at the brewery, uh, and some available to go in cans. We made Martin and Martin, a dry Irish stout. Um, and it is something we've made every single St. Patty's Day since we were open. So this is the time we've uh, released that beer. Um, but for the first time ever this year, we actually brewed an Irish red ale. Uh, we always have an American amber or American red. They're kind of uh, interchangeable terms, generally speaking, uh, called Sunrise. And it's one of our most awarded beers. Uh, but we thought we'd do something a little more festive this time for uh, St. Patty's Day. Um, it was fun. We actually got to brew it with our local homebrew club, the High Plains Drafters. A uh, bunch of cool diet guys, and they helped us um, on brew day. But also, they got to take some of the wort. Wort is the liquid we use, we make, to the that becomes beer. It's, it's the sugar solution before any yeast has been added to it. It is legally, technically, in all ways, it is not beer. It is just malt sugars, and um, it's a cool thing. Uh, they were able to take that with them and um, ferment it at home. So coming up soon, we're actually going to have an episode where we uh, go through that brew day, um, and then later we'll have an episode where we get to um, actually sample the home brew beard, home brewed beers that are made with the same wort and compare them against ours and see, uh, you know, they had the opportunity to use different yeast, they had the opportunity to use different hops and dry hop it, or make something just totally different out of that wort. I, I know at least one of the, um, the homebrew club members were considering um, reboiling the wort to concentrate it further and, and make it a stronger 
higher ABV offering than what we made here. Um, so we're really excited about that. That's coming up. We'll actually be sampling those beers early April, uh, and that video will probably drop uh, early May. Um, so looking at our tap room, um, you can kind of see it from the camera feed, but uh, you know it's definitely still busy and a little hectic and exciting. That being said. It's starting to um, starting to calm down in the sense of people are just getting settled in. Uh, there's a bit of a wait right now for um, getting a tattoo, which is, I think, obvious. Uh, but it's something that um, everybody's kind of getting comfortable. Uh, drinking a couple of beers. Again, I think everybody's mindful of the fact that if they're getting tattooed, they can't be intoxicated. Um, and they need to be cautious with their alcohol intake on that regard. But uh, that's true just existing in um, in a taproom setting and, and drinking beer at a bar or otherwise. You... Um, our, our taproom staff is very safe, and you know we follow all guidelines and protocols so that we don't overserve someone. You can tell things are uh, getting settled because people are post it up at their tables and see some waters around, get people getting some lunch. Uh, and also, my co-hosts have disappeared. <laughs> All right, James is getting ready for his next client. Um, he, she is signing some waivers and she's going to pull out her ID and they're going to get all that taken care of and um, she is just select her design. All right, she selected her flash. Uh, James just got an interesting question um, from a gentleman who definitely has some tattoos. It looks like maybe a full sleeve under his uh, shirt there. I don't know if you guys can see him, but um, he just asked if he could get one of the designs on the edge of his finger. And uh, James is all for it. However, he wanted to point out to him that um, not all of the finger tattoos stick well. Um, so we can get it inked in, we can get it there, but it may fade fast and it may not set well. So. Looks like he's considering it. I think it'll fit and be a fun thing, but it's kind of interesting um, to see James interact with his, his clients. He's, you know, been doing this for a while, and it's something that, you know, he's got a level of expertise. While I was in the chair, um, and I'll ask him some of these questions here in a minute when we're back, uh, when he's back with another uh, client, but um, while I was in the chair, uh, he was telling me that, you know, he still gets nervous to this day. He's putting some permanent art on on people's body, and that's something that he takes very seriously. Um, you know, it's something that's important to him for his clients to be satisfied with his work, uh, but also be safe. <laughs> All right, it looks like the next piece is a little bigger. James, I see you have two silhouette or uh, two stencils. Gonna double it up over here. So I'm sure you guys are asking after you've seen the expertise and execution of our current live stream. Are we doing more? Uh, the answer is most certainly yes. You'll have to be uh, suffering through a few more of these. Um, and by that I mean we're really excited to be doing um, and putting some emphasis on YouTube. It's, it's taken a lot of effort and time and a, and a little bit more than um, I think Trevor or I were quite prepared for. Um, our producer Kimball uh, actually doesn't live locally and so he's come out now uh, and we've done a couple of travel trips with him but he comes out, we focus and we commit to doing a bunch of videos 
getting a bunch of content filmed, and then we have to spend you know weeks afterwards editing and compiling and shooting more B-roll and getting things ready. And that's been a it's been a really interesting learning experience. But we've we've had a lot of fun, and we feel like we've definitely improved. I'm sure uh, I'm sure our audience can can tell as they've watched some of these videos, uh, which is cool. Um, but we also feel like some of the next steps and something that I think that I'll feel a little bit more comfortable with surprisingly is doing some live stream stuff. Um, we've got a few events planned. We've got actually one of the big events that we have coming up that I'm super, super excited about is um, the Ponda Setup Blended Family Fashion Show uh, co-hosted by Momentum of Roses, which is a local um, fashion designer and artist. And um, we're really, really excited about this event. Um, Matthew of Momentum of Roses has hosted a couple of other fashion shows, and we saw some um, some pictures and fi uh, video from his last event, and it's something that was just really impressive, and we thought we would love to be a part of something like that. So the cool thing about this is it's going to show some uh, quote-unquote high fashion, but also some beer bod fashion, and so we'll be uh, walking a runway, um, we'll have artists and uh, guest performers, but we'll also have models who are showing off some um, exciting design, um, merchandise and t-shirts and things like that, but also our new Honda Set of Spring and Summer merch line. Um, we don't have those pieces here yet, uh, but I will say uh, Trevor has been watching a lot of Baywatch lately and there is some inspiration gleaned from uh, the Baywatch marathons. <laughs> Listen, we just have a channel that pops up on our TV every time we turn it on and it's one of those Samsung channels, and it's 24 hours of Baywatch. And there's no other good channels to watch. And we don't want to look at a, a, a menu all day long, you know, so. So Trevor is specifically referring to, uh, we, we hung, uh, about a year and a half ago, we hung a giant menu TV in the brewery space where, um, you know, it's visible for customers, but certainly something that the production staff looks at all day long. And I think very randomly one day, uh, the TV got turned on and it just so happened to be showing Baywatch. And turns out Samsung TV and their apps has a, a Baywatch channel that's dedicated. So it plays it 24 hours a day. Uh, that has been left on for a few days now, and I believe Trevor's watched every single episode of Baywatch now for probably three or four times through. I think we're on the third time through, yes. <laughs> but you don't always get to see the whole episode, you know. You might be knocking out, transferring beer in the cellar, you know, you, you, don't, you don't always get to see every... I think Trevor's trying to say that he still works too, but it, it's a little less than clear. I didn't know where you were Um... But that being said, we do have some exciting merch coming out that's going to have um, some summer colors and, you know, a little bit of different designs, obviously all going to be Ponda Set of Branded stuff. Um, we do have some uh, reprints coming of our Ponda Set of Bucket Hats. Uh, for those of you who missed out on those last year, um, it's a perfect sun hat, perfect beach hat. If you've got to do some work outside, it's a good way to keep the sun off your neck, but also your face at the same time. <laughs> um, uh, we also have been planning some YouTube-specific merch, so keep your eyes out. We have not gotten those pieces ordered just yet, but we'll be doing a limited release of the Ponda Setta Road merch. Uh, we're hoping for that to come out in April. So um, I did get a question uh, via direct message asking what um, beer I'm most excited about that's on draft right now. It's a hard question. Um, there are some beers that I'm really like always a good fan, you know, a strong fan of, meaning, you know, I drink a ton of I-40. And um, recently premium has become something that I like look, look out for and get excited about because it's just something to be said for um, a clean American lager. Um, it's easy to drink. Um, but 
Uh, probably the beer I'm most excited about right now is Master of Your Domain. I think it's really well balanced. It uh, really nails that New England style IPA flavor profile. Uh, it's fruity. Um, there's a little bit of green herbaceous notes that balance out the, the tropical fruit side of things. And it's just the right amount of bitterness to be super refreshing and balanced so that you can drink more than one at a time. That's something that Trevor and I pride ourselves on is leaning into drinkability versus explicitly just, um, you know, big beers or, you know, and it's not to say we don't make some strong ABV stuff, but, but for the most part, we really lean into and embrace um, something that's drinkable. You know, Trevor and I uh, like to be able to have two beers at a time, you know, not something we want to have one and just wrap it up for the day. I think that really leans into and emphasizes the social nature of, of craft beer in particular and the pub environment, and it's something that, you know, means a lot to us. Hey, Trevor. Hey. What is your favorite beer to brew? Hmm. I would say that's a great question. My favorite beer to brew would probably be, I guess, Fast and Hazy because I have the mem the, the recipe memorized. But it has oats and a little bit of wheat, so sometimes it's a slow runoff. And it, but I can usually knock it out pretty quick. Um, Sunrise sucks to brew because it has like six different <coughs> malts that we have to weigh out. And uh, let's see, what else? Premium kind of sucks because it has corn and rice and it gets stuck too. So low light has uh, like I think it's 45% rice, so it sucks to brew. The lightest, cleanest beer is the worst to brew because it's sticky. Um, we use what's called rice holes. It's li literally the shell of the rice kernel um, to try to keep it from getting stuck, but it doesn't always work. Um, we use another product that sort of changes the chemistry of you know, the, the mash and helps it to be quote unquote slick, but it doesn't always work either. Um, but fast and easy, I have memorized and it's, it's pretty easy most of the time. Um, my favorite beer to drink would probably be I-40. What do you think about that? I do love myself a good 140. <laughs> 140. We have uh, nicknames for all our beers because people read the menu wrong so uh, 140 was it was called 140 one time and we get a Ponderosa Platinum <laughs> and Pondicetia Prime and uh, you know just some funny things but sunset. I guess Sunset yeah I mean it's it's pretty funny but um, our Jefe we've heard called Jeffy or Jeff or yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty funny. So if you're ever at the brewery um, and our tanks that are over here, sometimes we write the wrong name on the tank, but most of us know what they mean. But when we have new people come in, they're like, I don't see this sheet for this beer. And I'm like, oh, well, it's because we wrote something funny on the wall or on the tank itself. So all right, we've got another another victim here. She's getting the candle burning at both ends, coming along pretty pretty nicely. Still got people rolling in, trickling in. My fiance is watching the live right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> Heck yeah. He's making fun of us. <laughs> well, at least, you know, you took it like a champ, you know. Oh, yeah. he... Always will. <laughs> so we're looking like about halfway down the first, the first sheet.
camera is still 47% charged. I think there's been a few beers that uh, I thought were very excellent. Uh, Party All The Time, which is a mixed culture sour. Um, and we have entered it in several competitions. Well, I'd say, what, two or three right now. And I just know that that beer is going to win. And it, it hasn't, which is disappointing. I, I really feel like that one is like where it should be in like the description of you know where we're at but uh hello Caleb's family just arrived I think the boys are here to get some tattoos are you here to get a tattoo no um but it, it is very similar to our uh um blended family which has won several awards so that's kind of where i'm like man this beer should just win awards but it, it hasn't yet but that's okay um a few of the judges comments were it hasn't aged enough so i think uh hopefully next year or so which blended family's been around since 28 we brewed in 18 bottled it in 19 and it still tastes great and it still wins awards so that's pretty cool. I haven't had a party all the time in probably a year, I would say. I It's been probably six months for me. Maybe we should chill one down and open it here in a sec. I talked to some people inside the tap room that were wondering where, where they were on the line. And I said, what sheet are y'all on? And they said, second. And I said, well, they're about halfway through the first. <laughs> wow. So yeah. they, they might be. Uh... And then the guy was like, well, how are we not supposed to be intoxicated when we get tattooed? I'm like, that's a great question. I don't really know the answer to that. Moderation. In moderation. Drink one water for every two beers. How's our poll looking? Oh, your computer's not out here anymore. I'll go check. Nick's gonna check the poll. I told my wife I was gonna get her name on my forearms, Kylie Four, the number four ever. But uh, she told me I was dumb for doing that, so I guess I can't do that. So going back to, uh, you know, some beers that we were uh, super surprised by that have done so well. Um, our Sunrise Amber L has won several awards and multiple competitions. And uh, I mean, it's not our favorite beer to drink, but it is two style. And people around here, you know, we always say that it's sort of like that beer in between you know, if you're a craft beer lover, and if you're not, and you're just into, you know, light beers or Keystone or Coors or Bud, whatever it is, you know, we feel like Sunrise is that nice medium beer. And uh, we've been super surprised how successful it's been, how well it's been doing out in the market. Of course, it's one of our original beers we started, one of our core beers. So we, yeah, we're really proud of that beer. I think the only time we drink it is if we're canning it. Um, but we have, we have a lot of people that come in just for that. So that's pretty awesome for us.
Whoa. You're strong. All right. Hello, I'm Trevor. Nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. Can you explain to us what you have going on here? So I'm kind of taking everybody's information, getting their uh, consent sheets done, and then I'm working back and forth getting stencils for everybody. Okay, cool. Tell us about these machines. What exactly so do they do? This is a Thermofax. What you do is you take where did it go? A sheet of carbon paper, okay. and then you will take your stencils, put them in the back, and then we don't have a sleeve to run it through, so it'll mess the stencil paper up, but you'll run it through the stencil machine, and then your stencils will print out on the carbon sheet like this. Okay. And then I'm just scanning IDs on the printer, basically. Okay. That's about it, really. So then what do you do with the, the piece of paper that you print off? So I'll take it to James or Allie, and then they'll put some green soap on the arm, kind of wet the skin down, and then that stencil will just yeah. transfer right over to the skin. Okay. And then that's what awesome. they follow while they're tattooing. Awesome. So it's it's not a it's not a freehand tattoo. This one they're actually following they're actually the stencil. stenciled out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, you're doing a great job. Well, thank you, sir. It was <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. Thanks. All right. Here's the poll results. The updated numbers. The wheat is still winning, okay. but the uh, bottle cap is 22 percent. Pit vipers at 33 percent, and the wheat at 44 percent. Oh wow. Do, does uh, does it show you how many people have voted? Ten people have voted. Ten people, okay. Well, if you're watching right now, watching this live stream, go on there and vote. This poll is to determine what tattoo I'm going to get. Um, as mentioned earlier, my wife, I told my wife I was getting Kylie forever on my forearms, but I don't think I'm going to do that. All right, looks like we're going on to a second tattoo here. First candle is done. I don't know if you can see it right here. Looks pretty lovely. Looks great shading. Excuse me. Great shading by Sir James. Thanks, buddy. We still have a full house here at Pondaceta Brewing in Amarillo, Texas. I think we're on to our next tattoo over here. Looks like we are still about halfway through the list and haven't quite filled up the third sheet yet, but it might go fast if people start leaving or getting too drunk. So just a little history about my brewing experience. Um, I started brewing, oh man, it's probably been 15 years ago now, maybe longer than that. Um, I started doing it ho just home brewing as a hobby to keep myself entertained. Um, used to play, you know, a couple of, in a couple of bands around Lubbock, Texas. Um, and then uh, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. And so it was kind of like, eh, I want to stay at home. And I need a hobby that's not as loud. Playing drums is very loud and wakes babies up. So I was like, eh, I'm going to start home brewing. And there was a few people around my neighborhood and some of my friends that were doing it. Um, my very first beer was a rye, let's see, chocolate rye. Um, and it turned out, I mean, everybody's homebrew 
thinks they're, that it's great. But, you know, we had I had people that didn't really drink beer, and they said it turned out good. So, um, in my opinion, I thought it turned out great. Um, then from there, uh, just kind of homebrewed for a while. And then Caleb also was homebrewing at the same time, so I kind of would text him and call him, ask him questions. He would kind of ask me questions and, you know, just stayed in contact throughout that. And then uh, we got the awesome opportunity to quit both of our jobs and move back here to Amarillo, open up a brewery. I can't remember what our first beer we made together was. I think it was maybe Fast and Hazy. Uh, we've definitely brewed that one the most, and it's definitely one of the oldest ones. Do you remember what our first beer was that we made together? Ooh. Um, it was a Hazy IPA, wasn't it? It was. I, that's what I was saying. I thought it was a rendition of Fast and Hazy. I, I think that what we brewed became like the basis of our experimentation getting to Fast and Hazy. Um, well, I think the very first one, though, that I'm thinking of was actually, I made it before you were able to, like, you couldn't come down that weekend or whatever, because you were still, or up, you were still living in Lubbock. Um, I don't remember, what did we call that beer? Burger King I don't remember. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I'd have to get back on my computer, and I bet I could find the name. Yeah, we probably have all the OG recipes still on there. Um, so Caleb and his dad were building a... Um, single tier which means all the the kettle and everything are on the same level and you use pumps to move stuff out but uh hey y'all have a good day you too. see ya we have some patrons that come in all the time leaving so we're telling them goodbye all the time uh, some of the time three days a week well, okay, right. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> like most of the time, Wednesday nights. Every time, single Sunday, Sunday at lunch. Sunday lunches it's Saturday are the best. Lunch now. Yeah, it was, uh, but we'll be back tomorrow for Sunday lunch. Sometimes it's on a random Tuesday or Thursday night. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know. But, you know. We we show up to tell y'all to go home. That's true. That's it true. is actually very helpful. <laughs> yeah. When you got when I saw you guys. Uh, not that I'm trying to run away from you. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, oh, I'm here too. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that means we need to go home. I already told Megan I was going home, and I forgot about that. The cars have showed up. I need to get out of here. Uh, so we are, yeah, so back on the brew stand. Uh, it was a single tier, three, three vessel, and uh, Caleb and his dad were building it, which Caleb and his dad can build and weld everything. They were making it out of stainless, uh, you know, super nice. And I was like, it was before we even talked about opening a brewery. So I was like super jealous. And uh, I went over there one day to their shop and I was like, man, this is awesome. I would love to brew on this one day. And then, I don't know, my dad and Caleb's dad were trying to, they were drinking buddies and still are, but they're like, oh, the boys should just open their own brewery, blah, blah, blah. But anyway. And so it came, it came to be, and it's pretty awesome. But, um, we are actually bringing back a beer we brewed from the very, very, very beginning called J.B. Franco. It's a black saison. Is that what we described it as? Yeah. So, I mean, I think back in the early days, we referred to it as a French imperial stout because it was brewed with a French um, saison yeast. Uh, but I think a more... A more understandable description is Black Saison, Imperial Black Saison. It's right. it's like 10%, I think. And we have had many, many people try to figure out what the JB stands for, and it is a secret. Even Nick just showed up, and he has no idea what JB stands for. But we, I, I think only you and I and maybe our dads know, right? I think that's accurate. But we did build some hints into the new label. There is a new label, and it's on going to be bottled. And uh, there are a couple of hints on the label, label what it stands for. But. J B. Okay, we have some updated poll numbers. The updated poll numbers. We are tied once again. All three options are at 33% <laughs> with 14 people voting. 14 votes, 33% each. We are about 
to add a second tattoo on James's client. Um, yeah, back to JB Franco. It, it was just some stupid thing that I said because the way that it tasted originally was different. But, and then the Franco is just like French Saison yeast. So that's, the Franco is from that. But if you have any guesses as to what the JB stands for in JB Franco, let us know down in the comments on our, this video. See if, uh, if anybody gets it right, I don't know. We might send you a sticker pack or something. Might, unfortunately we can't ship beer, but if you are not in Amarillo, we could ship you, or we could not ship you a beer. I don't know. We might talk about it. If anybody figures it out, we might give you a free bottle of it. I don't know. Caleb might not want to do that, but. You're a couple hours in. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. All right, going awesome. Strong. Going strong. Yeah. Still going. Ten. I think I have ten or so. I think you're faster than James. Can you? Is there any trash talk you want to shout out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's definitely slow. You call him <laughs> Turtle Tack Glenn at the shop. Turtle. Turtle Tack Glenn. Oh wow, Turtle Tack Glenn. That's James, pretty. James calls me Alley Lightning Lyles. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, you're doing a great job. Thank Keep it up. You. So we always get asked, what was the beer that got us into craft beer and drinking craft beer and brewing? Um, as most young people, I just drank cheap beer that I could afford. You know, Coors Light was kind of my go-to. Um, Keystone, if we couldn't afford Coors Light. Um, my family... Actually, my mom is um, Czech heritage, and so we would always go to their, um, her last name is Patek, which we do have a beer called, award-winning beer called Patek. Um, that's her maiden name. Uh, it means Friday in Czech. Um, but, you know, so we would always drink Shiner. It's kind of like what my dad had, other than Coors Light or whatever. Um, so that was kind of a good segue. And then, I don't know, we'd just go to random house parties and people had different things. I remember taking a bottle of Stone's Arrogant Bastard to a wedding party. And, you know, I thought it was so cool because it was, you know, this hoppy beer or whatever. And, like, I almost threw up because I drank it. <laughs> uh, but I didn't want any of my friends to know that, so... Um, I just choked it down and pretended like it was delicious and tried to share it with them. Um, so then from there, it was just, you know, going to the different local stores in Lubbock and trying to find craft beer. Um, I can't think of, uh, like, very many that I would 
Like it kind of started with Shiner and then, um, you know, just kind of slowly started from there. Tried different things. I hated different things and just try to like force myself to like craft beer. What's the, uh, what's the beer? It's Newcastle. Oh. So Newcastle was another one that now that if I drank it, I would think it tasted skunky. But back then, back then, I, I love that stuff. I remember that beer very fondly, too. I mean, I think, like, I'm thinking it was probably, like, 2008-ish that I would drink a lot of Newcastle. Yeah, Cause I I, the same for me. It, it was in that period of time where American craft beer was huge. Like, it was becoming huge. It's nowhere near the size it is today. Way fewer breweries. I think we had half as many breweries back then. Right. Um, and it was, and that was a lot compared to what we had had just a year or two before. But, um, but a lot of the beer we... A lot of the beer that we had available to us was actually import beer, which is interesting because right. today, oh, yeah. I feel like you see almost zero import yeah. beer. You know, not, like not a lot. Newcastle and um, I mean, obviously Guinness and a few of those, but I feel like there's a couple others. Like Harp Lager was one. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden, but I think there was a few German beers too. Yeah. I remember. Okay, in college, one of my favorite bars was uh, this was in Tallahassee, Florida. It was called the Leon Pub, and they had a huge beer selection given the moment. But I still think it was probably only like forty bottled and canned beers or something. Like it's not that huge, and they only had like eight beers on draft or something. But one of them was they had an authentic uh, German um, Hef, and I remember ordering it and being like blown away by how much banana was there. Oh yeah, just like sure. it was like they added banana to it, but it was just an authentic German Hef. Right. That's cool. What uh, what was your first homebrew setup? Okay, my literal first homebrew setup was I borrowed a um, a large pot, like stock pot style pot, from the restaurant I worked at. I took it home for the weekend or like my days off, whenever that was, and I tried to boil wort on the stove inside after having made um, a tiny little like igloo cooler mash tun setup. Let me guess, it boiled over everywhere. I couldn't even get it to a boil. <laughs> um, so I literally put my roommate's blue plastic cutting board on top of it. Now I know how horrible of an idea that was from in ter like terms of DMS and everything else, but mm. at the moment, that was the only way I could retain enough heat for it to actually boil. Like it was getting so close and I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for it to do anything. <laughs> Finally, I threw that over it and I warped his cutting board and he's still mad at me oh, to this man. day for it. It was, awesome. it was Chris Warren. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, and I made an American wheat ale and for some reason it was a darker color. Huh. Uh, nice. Not like amber in particular, but a little ambery. Nice. But it was, I mean, also that's a DME days. Oh, so yeah. like, you know, I didn't have to actually, actually just, I didn't have to do any I think it was like the little like mini mash thing, like where you hold like have a grain bag that you sort of soak in there, right? right. Like yeah. not actually, not actually doing a mash. So I didn't have, I probably didn't have that igloo cooler set up yet. Now that I say that out loud, uh, nice. I only did one extract batch. That was it. I packaged it, and then I was like, it's not like it wasn't horrible. It wasn't in, like it wasn't um, infected. I don't think it was good though. If I had to say. Okay. I remember taking it to the homebrew store that was in Tallahassee. It was kind of cool. I was back in the days where homebrew stores were all over the place. And I was like, what do you guys think? And they're like, I mean, you didn't ruin your, you ruined anything, but they could, like, they didn't really have a lot of nice things to say about it, I guess. Hmm. But they didn't say I sucked. That right. made me feel special. Well, that's good to know. I think mine was a, I don't, I think I did buy it from, like, Austin Homebrew Supply. And it was just like a super thin wall kettle. And I had this uh, disco cooker, like a big giant disc from a plow um, that this dude was selling on the side of the road in Canyon for like a hundred bucks. And it came with this awesome stand and it was basically just a tube hooked to a propane bottle. And it just shot up a flamethrower to heat up, you know, heat up the disco. Anyway, so I used that stand to heat up my my wart, and uh, I did several brews on that. But same as you, I went extract and then started using real grain. It's like, oh, this is just like syrup that tastes like crap. I mean, I think that the flavors of those syrups is probably better than we wanted to give it credit for, honestly, because 
that's some like high tech manufacturing, honestly, by that yeah. point in time, right? But on the other hand, it just felt so strange to be like, like squeezing like syrup out of a right. giant plastic <laughs> bag. Or mine were in cans, Ooh. so you had to like scoop it out with like a spatula or something, and it or it would say like, you know pour boiling water into the can and swirl it around like you know like you're making soup or something but uh, uh looks like we just had somebody can you join us for a second how's it going man Good. what's your name man do what what's your name gavin. gavin hello gavin nice to meet you i'm i'm trevor that's caleb you have a microphone. i'm caleb <laughs> trevor i see that you got the yucca tattoo what made your decision for you today uh i like beer Nice okay. to get a discount on beer. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Are you prepared to show your tattoo every time you come in here? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did you get it? Uh, right on my quad. Okay, sweet. So I, I, if I got jeans on. I gotta draw my pants. Oh yeah. It could have been my ass cheek though. We that would have been good. We've had a few uh, rear end suggestions. <laughs> but, uh, well, this is a family friendly establishment. We won't let you show us your butt like just for a discount. Yeah. Fair enough. Th thanks for getting our logo on your body. Oh yeah, no problem. Nice to meet you, guys. <laughs> Cheers, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So I'm on the committee with Ryan. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah. So are you going to come for oh, yeah. brew day or uh, packaging yeah, yeah. day? I haven't been able to in the past, but I'm going to come this time. Okay, so. sweet. Yeah, yeah. I think I actually have to, I had templated out a schedule, and now I have to finalize that schedule that's right. only a week away at this point. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm pretty sure we're brewing it on the 1st and the 2nd of April. Okay. Um, so those will be the brew days. Um, and then we'll be packaging it the like couple of days before it, it drops. Right, right. So. Nice. But yeah, we plan on being here for that one. Sweet. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I, I definitely recognize you. I know we've seen each other around, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. I think, yeah, because like you always go out to Canyon whenever we're doing the VIP stuff and everything. For sure, so. for sure. I got a lot of cruises and stickers on everything. Nice. So. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for coming out. All right. So let's say you're at home and you, you love craft beer and you want to get into home brewing. What do you think the first step should be? Go buy a beer? <laughs> Go buy our beer? Yeah, or go buy our beer. Yeah, I just said a beer, but oh. for step one, I mean, I was um, I was pushed into home brewing just simply because my then girlfriend, now wife, bought me a book about home brewing, and it was the uh, Homebrew Companion, I think. There's another one. Uh, he, what's the author's name? I've just gone blank. Um, the one that everyone has? Yes. It's, uh, I don't remember. I think it's just called Home Brewing. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We have one right here, but will that blow all your paperwork off? Probably. It, it will definitely blow all that. Yeah. 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 Okay, sorry, we had a quick break, had some technical questions from the artist, getting our fan turned on, um, and our producer looked up the book that we just went blank on. So, uh, Charles Papazian, I can't believe we forgot his name. Yeah, uh, he's literally the reason why you have the modern American craft beer industry, and that's not an understatement or an overstatement, that is like a huge piece. He, he shaped a lot of what you see out there today. And he, I think he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Brewers Association a couple years ago. We were at, weren't we at that? Um, uh, it was a Craft Brewers Conference, and I think it was for a GABF Award. Or was it, G, or maybe it wasn't, oh, it was, it was 2020 when it was delayed, wasn't it? Yeah. That's why they were together. And so um, we got to see him in person accept his Lifetime Achievement Award. And that was, felt kind of special because a little bit of a full circle situation. Um, but so, back to the question at hand. Oh, some technical issues. We got some, some fan action going on in here and... <laughs> we got some fan action and it is blowing some papers around. Give us just a minute.
Trevor's gonna grab some tape. Okay, so back to the question at hand. Um, if you're sitting at home thinking you want to get into beer, uh, what what should you do? Um, I think that a home brewing book, the books that we read um, by Charles Charles Papazian, is huge. Um, so that would be, uh, I think, the Home Brewer's Companion, and then the Guide to Home Brewing, and then he has a another one maybe called Micro Brewed Adventures. Uh, all of those books are great. Um, there are a lot of home brewing books out there, and there is a few home brewing books uh, actually available online for free in terms of just like on a website type thing, not like a Kindle file, but like a just here's the templates of how to do that. Um, and there's some really good blogs out there related to home brewing too, which you can find. Um, but I think I'd start with some technical technical pieces. I would probably avoid things like Mr. Beer kits, but um, there are some homebrew stores who sell kits. Uh, we actually have a homebrew store here in Amarillo called the Amarillo Brewing Supply, and it's connected to the old Tascosa Brewery, which is a recently opened brewery. Um, go check those guys out. Uh, I don't know that they have a large web presence. They certainly, I don't, I don't believe they have a web store, but you could order from them via the phone or in person. Um, there are also um, several homebrewing websites. Uh, Unfortunately, a couple of those are actually owned by AB InBev, which is kind of wild. But um, several of those stories, if you search homebrewing, they're going to have some beginner homebrew kits. There's a good way to get started that way. And we were talking about liquid extract earlier and how we didn't like the syrup and we just wanted to use real grain. That's probably us being a little bit uh, type A, a little intense, and just wanting to do everything the, the most hard way ever. Uh, and or use the fanciest equipment ever, and that's a whole thing all on its own. Uh, you can get a little insight into our personalities there probably. Um, but that being said, you can make some really good beer with liquid extract or dry extract. In fact, we keep a couple bags or boxes of dry extract here at the brewery at this point in time just in case we have issues in a brew day. It can allow us to make some edits and adjustments when we need to. So uh, you can make a really good beer, and basically the, that takes away a couple of steps. So. If, if I were gonna give you a simplified um, overview of how to make beer, um, is first step is you're gonna make a malt-based sugar syrup solution that is called wort. Uh, we talked about wort earlier in the day uh, with our wort share beer we did with the homebrew club, but basically you need to have a dilute, like sweet tea style extracty thing. And, then you're gonna add yeast and have fermentation. That part of the process is uh, two to three weeks on average. Uh, it is gonna be where you make the alcohol. So it converts those malt-based sugars into alcohol and CO2. Um, and then from there, you're gonna package it in some form or other. You can do some bottle conditioning. You can do keg conditioning. You can also force carbonate once it's finished and put it all in a keg and serve it out of a kegerator. But um, truly, I'd be surprised if you couldn't get into home brewing in a kind of moderate level, uh, beginner level, but uh, for a couple hundred bucks. Um, borrow or drink some glass bottles and rinse them out, reuse them and clean them, and then, um, and then you start filling them up. Um, that whole process is a little intense, but genuinely you can make very drinkable beer um, in your garage, your backyard, or otherwise. Um, and, and you can have that ready to drink in three weeks from today. Um, Charles Papazian, or Charlie Papazian, has this line, uh, relax and have a homebrew. And I think that's a really great input, is just take a breath. Uh, you don't have to freak out. Um, you're making beer, and at the end of the day, if you've made beer successfully, you can't kill your friends. <laughs> they won't die from drinking, even if it tastes bad. Um, there are some probably limits to that, but uh, beer is generally speaking safe and easy to drink. And so you can do something um, you can do something in your garage that tastes okay. You may not make your favorite beer ever on day one or on brew one, but you can do something at home surprisingly good um, and surprisingly easy. Uh, it doesn't take a ton of specialized equipment, although I will say, your life gets easier with some specialized equipment. And certain beer styles are easier than others to make, but. Um, 
I don't know if anybody knows what uh, chicha is, but just to give you guys an example, you can make something crazy even at home. Um, my brother, uh, our producer for our YouTube channel, actually made chicha for his first beer. It's a Peruvian corn-based beer concept. Um, and uh, Dogfish had made it famous on their, um, I think, TV show or YouTube show. I can't remember now. I think it was a broadcast on cable TV um, where they literally chewed up corn. The enzymes from chewing raw corn actually allowed you to convert the starches in corn to sugar, and they made beer that way. They made it on TV, and my brother wanted to do the same thing. And so I remember coming home to visit while in college one time, or maybe it was right after college, and my dad and my brother are chewing and spitting corn into a bucket. I'm, I'm like... A little disgusted by the idea of it all of a sudden um, but that being said they were able to make a beer from that and it's a, a it's a cool old school uh very very native um south american drink called chicha um, low abv surprisingly surprisingly drinkable uh, i did try it even though it had my dad's and my brother's spit it might have even had some of mine i'm not 100 percent sure All right, so checking back in on uh, the tattoo event going on here, we're at Pondicetta during Drink and Ink. This event started at noon. We have been swarmed ever since. We've actually got two tattoo artists who are doing some live tattooing. Um, they are uh, doing flash designs that they've been working on all of this week, uh, or actually a couple of weeks, I should say, getting their art ready. Um, they're only doing their pre-designed um, flash art, uh, but you get to come in, sign up, and get one of their designs uh, tattooed on your body. Um, remember, this is permanent real tattooing. It is a lifetime choice, but we have a list going. Uh, you sign up, and it's first come, first serve. We might not make it through all the lists, but we are going to work really hard to get through it. This event goes from noon today until 6 p.m., um, after six, the artist may try to uh, finish up some art uh, from some of the people who have already signed up, but it's going to be limited. Uh, if you're interested in participating, we probably still have a few slots available. Uh, I encourage you to get down here, get on the list, grab a beer, and hang out. Uh, quick reminder, we won't tattoo intoxicated persons, um, and we recommend you being cautious and taking care, of your, uh, taking care of your piece. But it's a really fun environment. We've got a lot of people in the room just kind of excited to see uh, the art people are getting, um, and it's cool to see the people who already have art uh, on their body and, like, melding that in with their design and, and planning out maybe a future sleeve. These artists um, are local here in Amarillo. They work at 8th Ave Tattoo. Um, they've been working on... Um, uh, they've been tattooing for three more, three plus years each. Um, and they're great artists. Um, so if we're gonna got some people on camera getting tattooed right now. Um, James is finishing up his second tattoo on the client he has with him. Allie is getting ready to take her, her next uh, piece. They've uh, made a selection from the flash sheet, getting their station prepped, and they're gonna um, get their stencils put on the body. Um, it's a pretty exciting thing. Um, got lots going on right now. And just when I think it's starting to settle in and people are getting comfortable, and I, I certainly don't feel like it's as hectic as it was at 12.15 this morning when we got started, but. Um, it is busy. We've got a lot of people in the room. No. Uh, got families here. We're a family-friendly environment always here at Pondicetta. Um, obviously, you have to be uh, 18 or older to get tattooed in the state of Texas anyways. Uh, we've made this event, specifically on the tattoo side of things, a 21 and up event just to be safe and cautious on our end. Uh, but, um, you know, you can come with the whole family and see what's going on. Um, my kids are actually here right now. Uh, I know Trevor's family is on his way up here too, on their way up here too. It's just something cool to be able to uh, see somebody getting this art um, while they're in their like comfort zone.
Wow. Okay. We just got an announcement saying we've got five more spots, and we think we're gonna then we're gonna cut it off. Um, we've got a long list going right now, and we just don't want anybody to uh, to not be able to get their art once they've signed up. Hey, Trevor, is uh, is Kylie gonna come up and get a tattoo? She says no. <laughs> ah. Uh, Kylie is Trevor's wife, and um, he told her this morning that today he was going to come home with uh, a Kylie Forever tattoo on his body, and I, I believe she threatened divorce. Uh, not necessarily that. She just said I was stupid. <laughs> ah, same thing. Yeah. So um, I think it's perfect time to talk about how this event has gone and it's been busy and exciting and um, I, th I think we'll reset, um, you know, we'll probably reset our list and if we have some people leave, we might have some spots open up but we can't make any promises. Uh, the artists have decided we've got probably enough time for the entire day to be able to get a few more people on our list. Uh, but that being said, we have uh, every intention of doing this event again. Um, we have not confirmed a future date right now. However, uh, we fully expect um, to host this event um, come summer. Uh, I don't think it's something that we could do every month. It just wouldn't wouldn't be feasible for our artists or or our space because this, this is a bit of an intense moment. Um, but that being said, we hope to have this event um, again over the summer, and we hope to be able to accommodate more people at that point. Um, you know, our, our artists are over here working really hard, and I think it's important to remember, always tip your tattoo artist and your bartender. Uh, we've got James Glenn uh, finishing one up right now, and we've got Ali Lyles who is getting started on one uh, at the same time. So I, I think something that's been interesting as craft beer has developed into this monstrosity that it is today, and, and I've got to be honest with you guys, the craft beer industry is is, is a little unnerving in the moment. It's, it's on the decline as a greater whole, and we've seen some breweries and friends of ours uh, close down and struggle, and I'd love to say uh, our, beer, our brewery is uh, operated flawlessly and easily, but that'd be a lie. Uh, there's a little bit of struggle all the time. Um, and we have to work hard. We have to host events like this. We have to do something exciting, uh, get people in the door, and you know. And then you, at the end of the day, you still have to make good beer too. Um, and and that's not to say even if you do all things right, you can still run into problems. Um, so just an important thing to remember: support your local breweries. If you've got a beer or a brewery down the street, and you're like, I really love that one beer, go buy one today, please. Uh, our breweries need your support. Um, that being said, I think part of the growth of our industry has shifted to some uh, varying availability of some beers that I, I remember growing, I say growing up with, but, but getting into the industry with. Um, I think my, I, I have a fun story I'll, I'll share at some point about uh, Sierra Nevada Torpedo, which is their, uh, their classic West Coast IPA. Um, it's uh, an extra IPA according to the label, and uh, a friend brought a six pack over to my house one time. and. We were confused about what extra IPA meant, uh, but that's that's earlier. That's had to have been 2008. Um, so early days of the big, big 2000s craft explosion. Uh, I say earlier days. Earlier days for me, at least. Uh, but uh, that beer is still pretty widely available across the entire country, which is really great. But um, I remember some beers that we used to drink back then that you can't find anymore. Um, one that comes to mind. Um, well, actually, and it's, it, it became available here and then became unavailable here uh, in West Texas. Uh, Bell's Oberon. Uh, I remember being so excited the first time I got to try that beer and being like, this is what an American craft wheat tastes like. It's none of the, the German phenols 
uh, you know, banana clove flavors, but just sort of a citrusy thing before uh, uh, before hazy IPA was ever a thing. It kind of almost looked like a hazy IPA, uh, something that you could get and technically is still distributed to Texas, but um, is way less available than it used to be. Um, if you guys are watching or listening, um, share in the comments uh, a craft beer you remember from from the early days of craft beer. Uh, I say early days, but from the days you got into craft beer. Uh, what's what are some things that you guys have seen or or, or, or miss and have gotten to try and want to get some? Of? Too slow. Megan was here. Um, a beer that's um, a beer that's not as widely available as I wish it were, just because it's such a great beer, is Pliny the um, Pliny the Younger. Uh, oh, well, Pliny the Elder too. Um, both of those beers are excellent. I've gotten to try both of them, um, but it's somewhat rare. Uh, it's interesting, you know, we've got some breweries who quickly push to be nationwide um, and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but then you've got brewery like um, Russian River who's focused and maintained like a huge emphasis on quality that everybody would agree with, and um, they're not very widely distributed even given the fact they're as large as they are. Uh, they do a release and, you know, there are beers that don't leave the California, like, local market that they, they sell in. Uh, but there are other beers that they are able to put into uh, Denver, Colorado, for example. It was pretty surprising to me the first time I was able to get to a bar in Denver and order that beer on draft. Oh, we've got a comment uh, from Wonderluster mentioning apple ales um, in, a, in a moment before ciders were just becoming the, the focus and rage. And, that's interesting. Uh, I, I remember one or two, but I, I don't remember it being a, a widespread thing. So I think it is a, a good point. It's like some stuff that, that's out there, but just not widely available. And then you have a giant shift in the market where everybody's looking at ciders and then later maybe seltzers. And I think a reason for some of that is probably uh, health considerations in a sense of people being sensitive or cognizant of gluten. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's a, there are certainly a lot of opinions and and thoughts about uh, uh, gluten in particular, but uh, it's something that's um, that, that really shapes some people's decisions. And so, uh, you know, it is a specific reason why we serve cider and uh, sangria here at the brewery, along with traditional wine. So, you know, something that we're proud to offer and have offered since day one is, um, you know, we have a California Cab and a California Pinot Noir, and then we also have. Uh, typically, we try to keep a Sauv Blanc and um, a few of those other things available, too. I think right now we've got a Riesling um, and a Chardonnay. Um, Let's go. I'm taking over, I guess. Well, the poll results are in. I'm just going to go ahead and tally this as the final poll. 30% wheat, 40% bottle cap, 50%, or no, 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 30% pit viper, 40% bottle cap, 50% wheat. So, so uh, Trevor is saying the Electoral College is picking the bottle cap, and therefore it is the winner of the poll, and that's what he will be getting. I like the skull one with the hop in its head. That's the one I wanted. But my wife told me I couldn't get it. Ah. So that means I should get it. <laughs> Just tell her you're going to get one thing and get another thing. As I said, there's only five more spots left, which I'm sure by now has filled up. Uh, people are definitely just piling in here to get these tattoos. We're so thankful for such a great turnout today. 
and we will obviously be doing this one again. Uh, we really weren't sure what to expect, but it's been such a great turnout both for us and for the artists, and we're really happy to uh, get some, some new faces in here because the majority of this crowd is people we probably haven't seen too many times, and we're happy to have them in here. We're really thankful to James and Allie from 8th Avenue Tattoo here in Amarillo, Texas, doing their thing. Hope you guys have been enjoying this live stream we got going on today. We actually have a new video on our Pondicetta Road YouTube channel every Saturday. Uh, today we released Beer Cocktails Volume 2. Not sure if Caleb or Trevor has talked about that yet. We just got an update that there are no more spots left. We are filled up at 3.30 is what I'm going to assume the time is. So. Halfway through the day, all the time slots are already full. What a great turnout it's been. I think James is finishing up one here on this young lady and then Trevor might be up next. So uh, just stay tuned for that. I think we're gonna have to get a final tally. So when you sign up for the tattoos, after you put your information on there, you put what number from the flash sheet that you wanna get tattooed. So at the end of this, we're gonna have to tally everything up and see which one, first of all, was most popular. And then secondly, uh, how many people got the yucca tattoo. We were running a promotion. If you get the yucca tattooed on you today, uh, we'll give you one free draft beer after your session and then 10% off of all your draft beer purchases in the tap room. Uh, for the foreseeable future, we, we don't want to say for life right now because we don't really know what that looks like, but for the foreseeable future. So um, I'd like to give a big shout out to all those who got the Yucca tattooed on them today. That's uh, you know, it's really cool to see our artwork on people and that's a, that's a big commitment, but you know, you can't really uh, deny uh, getting a, getting some free beers out of doing something like that so kudos to all those people and uh, again thank you to uh, these artists drawing up this great stuff
Mic check. Check, check. I'm, I'm doing the interviewing, but I don't really know what to say right now. You know the guy? Man? I don't know what to say right now. Just letting him work. You got it. So these guys are four hours in almost here, cranking out these tattoos, and I mean, man, they're just flying right through them. Uh, we we officially had, I believe, 75 people signed signed up for tattoos when it was all said and done. And uh, I, I mean, I can speak from my own experience uh, doing this live stream today. It's it's flown by, so can't imagine how these guys are feeling. They are pumping out some great artwork in such a little amount of time, and it's really cool to see. All right, so as you can see, hopefully on the far side, the gentleman in the plaid shirt looks like he just got a yucca tattoo as well. I just talked to two gentlemen who had them on their thigh, and they asked if it would be awkward if to show it they had to pull their pants down if they were wearing jeans. And uh, I said, if they don't believe you and they really want, I don't know. I was like, I guess it's the discretion of the bartender. But, as you can see, James is still working on a, a skeleton on this young lady. Ben, Ben is our main guy in the tap room right now. How's it going, Ben? It's going pretty good over there so far. Everybody so, enjoying their beers? Responsibly, of course, yes. <laughs> Ben's been slinging beers all day, getting the people happy. running super low on our uh, camera over here um, Nick tell me what is what was your first craft beer that you remember uh, I'd have to say Sierra Nevada Pale Ale Sierra Nevada Pale Ale all right we also have JC here it's one of the tap room pros JC what what does you, what was your favorite first craft beer that you remember 
Dang. I know it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Just joking. Yeah. We're the same age. We are the same age. <laughs> um, man, Death by Coconut. Okay. Death yeah. by Coconut, wow. By coconut. So you just went from like Keystone Light to freaking <laughs> Death by Coconut? Oh, Death by Coconut, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one of my Bold favorites. move, Cotton. That was a bold, yeah, bold move. Bold move. All right. The, yeah. That's that awesome. That's one of my favorites. That's, it's a good one. I don't like coconut, and I like that one. Interesting. All right, so it looks like Allie is uh, preparing for another client over there. Let me check the list here. We're still on the first page. So if you're watching this at home and you're on the list, you might as well stay there for a little bit longer. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that I can sneak in there soon. Do you think that's going to happen? Uh, I'd like to think you could just swoop in next right here. Um, as far as my camera battery percentage goes, that's really my hope for the live stream audience. Maybe we can just tell him we need to get mine done so the camera's about to run out so we can catch mine on camera. But I don't know. Caleb's coming back with two beers. Hopefully one's for me. He's shrugging his shoulders, looking awkwardly around. It would be funny just to have a camera follow Caleb around all day and me and Nick commentate on it, <laughs> like sports commentators. Um, yeah. I don't know if the audience has seen uh, Mystery Science 3, or was it Mystery Science 3000? Yeah. It's uh, this stupid show with two robots and a human in space and they commentate over old sci-fi movies. It's very hilarious, but Caleb mentioned earlier we watch the 24-hour Baywatch channel here while there's no customers. And uh, we try to do like the mystery science commentation over. And uh, looking back, you know, Baywatch is a little ridiculous, but still great all in the same motion. What do you think about that? It is very soap opera-y, which is not how I remember watching it when I was in my younger years, but maybe I was just focused on different parts of the show. I think you probably were, as were I. I didn't realize every single episode has a scene where they're gazing off into the ocean, remembering past lovers and friends. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. All right, James, how are you feeling right now? Um, uh, feeling pretty good. I think I need to chug a coffee and then get right back at it. All right, you need to chug a beer as well? <laughs> Maybe one of them, too. Okay, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. All right, guys, it looks like James just wrapped one up, and Allie is going strong over there. Oh, two of them. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I didn't mean to sell you short. My bad. James just wrapped up two tattoos. Um, Allie's over here working on something right now. Um, we have officially cut off signups for today. We have a long list going right now, and... Um, the, the artists want to make sure they can get through as many of our lists as they can. Um, so now it's time for James to start wrapping up and get ready for the next, uh, the next client. 
Uh, got Nick coming back up over here. Uh, I got a couple questions for Nick. Hey, Nick. Do you remember your first ever craft beer? Did you guys already do this? Trevor did it. Ah! Let's go again. Nick, what's your first ever craft beer? What do you think it was? Ooh. It's a, it's a mainstream one. Yingling? Or do we count that? I don't know that I count that currently. Hmm. Give me another hint. It's, the style would give it away. Um, California Brewery. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Yeah! Nailed it. <laughs> Slam. Awesome. I don't know who I'm slamming, but yes. Okay, nice work. Uh, good choice. You know what? If I have to be honest, if I'm at a, uh, at a bar that doesn't have much of a craft selection and they've got like Shinerbach or Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and like Hopadillo or something, I am 100% always choosing Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I mean, family owned still, that's huge. Um, that beer still tastes as good as it did the first time I had it. I agree. I haven't had one in probably a couple years, but I mean, throughout the years since I first started drinking craft beer, going back to it, I'm like, all right, this is still nice. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's one of those beers that's almost surprising in the sense of like how important it is. Like, I mean, it is iconic. That green label, I mean, I can see it from a mile away. Yeah, 100%. I think another one that I drank, like in my first type of craft beer era, was um, Shiner's Wild Hair. I remember that beer. What was that? I think it was also a pale ale, if I'm not mistaken. I can just think of the label. You know, I could absolutely see that. I think you're right. Um, I think it's one of those things that's, man, Shiner has thrown some wild beers out there. and. And what I mean by that is some beers that I really wanted to be good and, and, and were not. And, you know, I think that was a drinkable one. Yeah, I agree. That uh, They've done some stuff over the years that I wasn't a fan of, but that one always, like, resonated in my head for sure. I mean, Shiner Bach, that's like... It's just my screen, so the battery doesn't Someone matter. said they were watching it, and it, they could tell your battery was going dead. Oh, Interesting. We've got uh, maybe some battery issues on our live stream, so just heads up, guys. We will be wrapping this up at some point. Uh, we can't live stream forever, but uh, we have enjoyed getting to hang out with you guys. Um, we're now joined by our close friend, Alex Cunningham, who was a former viewer of this live stream, but it looks like he's gotten himself up and out of bed, and he's here to have a beer. You know, those fun things that we all do on Saturdays. Sleep in? Band practice. Oh! Also sleep in. Subtle, yes. subtle brag? Yeah, subtle brag, for sure. Uh, humble brag, I guess. You know, subtle brag. I don't, yeah, it's not very humble. It's, <laughs> it's <a brag. laughs> How was band practice? Oh, it was rough. In, in a good way, but it was rough. Like, you, really working it out. Can you, new yeah. songs, trying to finalize details, all the fun stuff. Can you give us your best blah? No. Oh, <laughs> dang it. It would blow the feed, you know? We don't want to hurt hurt anybody's ears. Uh, Alex, what's your band name? Uh, Bear the Mark. How can we find you guys? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. Anywhere you stream music, you can find us. I realize this is a really obnoxious and not accurate thing to say at all, but I really thought you were about to say Applebee's. Oh, yeah, you know, also on Applebee's, touch <laughs> tunes most likely. Uh, Try and play some Bear the Market at Applebee's, see what happens. Fights will start. Definitely. <laughs> it sort of makes me think of the Denny's, like, you know, Instagram-y <laughs> thing. <laughs> or Reddit thing, maybe? I don't know. It was like a Facebook thing. Yeah. Or uh, MySpace, probably, at that time. Oh, it was probably MySpace. Shit. That was today. I, it has been um, a hectic day so far. Uh, I, and, and in the best way possible. We, um, naturally, were a little slow, a little behind. Um, you know, we started our live stream, as you well know, at 12 p.m. Mountain Time, not Central Time, where our city is located. Uh, but uh, I think things have begun pretty well, honestly. Um, we had about 20 people show up at 12 sharp. Uh, like, people were walking in before we actually opened. Uh, I guess that's my fault for opening the door for the artist to come in. 
it's, it's super exciting to see, I mean, all these people that are here for a pretty fun event. And I think, as you kind of discussed, community outreach and doing more things like this and the fashion show coming up, all these different events that maybe we don't consider like brewery related, but we're showing that we can. And it's super fun. Absolutely. I think that's a really cool piece of what, what we get to do. I mean, obviously, like making beer is a production thing. It's a, it is a manufacturing environment. On the other hand, our business is more or less, it's like five different things. I don't know. It's like we've got a manufacturing operation. We've got a wholesale operation. We have a restaurant operation. We've got a tap room. But um, I think events could be the fifth one of those things, and it's really cool to like bring new people in the doors and then bring our people into uh, other communities, So, in, including our regular customers in the, the tattoo circles. Oh, absolutely. Does this mean we're going to have metal shows again? You know what? You put me on the spot, but I would love to do that again. I mean, enough time has passed that I'm starting to think about it, but like, we're, we're over a year now, aren't we? Oh, it's a year and a half, I believe. I think you're right. Um, which, I mean, that's just shits and giggles, but... Sure. No, I mean, it would be fun. Uh, you know, we do regular music. We host music every Wednesday and every Saturday. Um, but I think that uh, diversity of music is actually a cool thing we get to do here. Our music doesn't get as much attention as we wish it would, just because, you know, uh, there's a lot of places that have live music regularly. But um, you can always find live music at Pondesetta on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. Uh, we also try to do um, karaoke every Friday. We do trivia every Monday. I'm going to mix these days all around so you guys can't follow me here in this conversation. But uh, typically, we'll do new beer releases on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we've already talked about sangria, but we do a new sangria almost every single Thursday. Um, so there's always something weird going on here at the brewery. And it's really fun to uh, jam a bunch of people in our space and say, check this out. I mean, I think one of those pieces is building this community. And, you know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, before we opened, we had people thinking, like, oh, there's not enough college kids in Amarillo for you to have a brewery. Like, let's be honest, and most college kids aren't here at the brewery every week. Uh, this, is, um, this is a real community of uh, adults all around the spectrum. Um, we've got, um, you know, the affluent white male category, which is like the predominant crap your customer, but we are regularly reaching out to other groups of people. And then you come in here, I mean, I'd say it's a pretty diverse crowd. No, and I think that's important, like for Amarillo specifically, is as diverse as the brewery is on any given day, seeing everybody get along and like we share interest and in, you know, finding something new on a, a weekly basis is super fun. I mean, the amount of people that we've met just through trivia alone, it's pretty impressive. And like creating an environment that is safe from your sexual orientation, your color, your political party, doesn't matter here, it's pretty cool. No, absolutely, I'd like to, I mean, I, I, it feels really good to have, I mean, granted a close friend, but a, a, a regular customer as well uh, share that sentiment. I mean, for us, it's. We, we absolutely want to make a comfortable space, and it's something that um, um, it's something that we've really worked hard to uh, to articulate and, and create. Is that like a, a space where whether or not you feel like you know what craft beer is, that you're comfortable and you can walk in here and hang out. Uh, I mean, you know, from family friendly to you know, like you said, we've hosted some some outlier events like large metal shows. Um, you know, we end up with kids here who are 17 and 18 years old sometimes, uh, but also we end up with you know a bunch of 50 year olds who are just hanging out, checking out the latest beer release too. And that's you know that's something that's really important, I think, for building a community connected to a business, sure, but like that is a, a genuine community. No, and that's. What has been good about Pondicetta since the beginning is the community, right? I mean, that's what you and Trevor have worked so hard to build. It's not just like, oh, we're making Amarillo cool. I mean, in the smallest sense, like making Amarillo somewhere that you want to be or want to visit or, you know, you're, you're coming through town like, okay, there's like four or five places I want to hit in Amarillo. Like Pondicetta is where I always tell people to go. So it works out. 
Well, thank you for that. Uh, but uh, I also think it's cool. Like, I mean, that is something that, you know, before we opened the brewery, like, there are cool little spots all over the country. I mean, for that matter, at this point, all over the world. But, like, you know, being in a small town in Iowa and going to a brewery that you just feel immediately comfortable in is one of the inspirations for Pondicetta. And so we wanted it to feel a little bit like uh, the locals of Amarillo could step in here and feel like they went somewhere. But for somebody who's not from Amarillo to be like, wow, I I didn't expect this I in the most positive way. No, this is a destination, uh, at least for me, I, almost home away from home at this point. So, I mean, how many times a week are you here regularly? Three, four? I mean, that's per day sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, thankfully, I, I can work from here, so... And, we do business together, so I have reasons to be here. That's true. Yes, I'm a bar fly, but <laughs> on purpose. Sure. No, I, and we uh, 100% thank you for your support. Um, but I think to go back to community and what uh, organiz organizations we've supported, I mean, we just wrapped up a fundraiser for the victims of the Panhandle fires, um, wildfires. Uh, we raised over $500 here in a week's period, uh, and we're actually working on some follow-up uh, fundraising for that. We're also, you know, something that you're well aware of, but we're we're doing our Park Road 5 beer for the sixth time, I think, now, ever, uh, which is wild. I mean, I say wild. It's just something that we've committed to and supporting the, the, the residents of the Panhandle. No, and, uh, when you all just started or finished brewing Vanna, right? And yeah. that goes towards, what, women brewers, right? Isn't that the, uh, like, the concept behind that? So yeah. there's always something at Pondicetta that is not about Pondicetta. And I think that is brilliant for Amarillo. Like, we're serving more than just themselves. Sure. No, and I mean, that's, uh, I'll say that's that's somewhat intentional on our part, obviously, right? Like, we, we want to be, we don't want to just be a place for you to go get drunk. That's not, that is not our purpose. We like beer. We all like to have a good time and, and celebrate um, our community and our, our, our ex lived experiences. But, but yes, absolutely. You just called out Vanna White. Uh, that is a hazy pale ale we brew every year, and that's something that um, uh, we use the the National Pink Boots Hop that is a blend of uh, cool hops to make a specialty beer every year, and then we donate a portion of those proceeds every year to the Pink Boots organization. Um, shout out to our friends who are involved in that organization directly. Uh, our friend Georgie just became the president of the Pink Boots organization nationally, and that is such a huge um, a huge honor for her and a big deal uh, supporting women in beer, women in uh, Texas beer in particular, uh, non-binary people as well, um, and that's something that uh, we're proud to be able to contribute to. Well, I'm going to go find another beer, so... I'm yeah, it looks like you've run out. Yeah, it's quick, right? <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks for being on camera with me. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, I think the artists are taking a quick break and getting reset. Um, I think James is almost ready to sit back down. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that we'll be wrapping up our feed here pretty soon. Um, we've been going for a long time today, and um, James, I think, is about to tattoo uh, Trevor Martin. Um, we're going to see if we can get him uh, slipped in here on the list uh, and get everybody taken care of as well. Um, give us just a minute, and we will circle back. All right, folks, Trevor's still here. We got still a bunch of people here. The line is very long still. Still got lots of people waiting. It's going good. So we just met some guys from Fort Worth. They are opening a distillery in Fort Worth. And they actually drove down here, up here, I guess, from Fort Worth to get some tattoos, which is pretty awesome. Uh, super cool guys. 
Uh, they're going to be opening up near the Justin area. So that would be pretty awesome. Everyone is staring patiently, waiting for their name to be called. It's gonna be a long day for these tattoo artists. All right, we got some people shouting out from Alaska. Wonderluster, that's awesome. All right, guys, we are getting close to the battery dying on Nick's camera. <laughs> Nick, have you checked the polls lately? The final poll result is in. The people want to see the wheat tattoo, but I mean, overall, you have, you have the final say. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, chiming in on the poll. My wife, Kylie, is here. Kylie, what do you think that I should get? The bottle cap. The bottle cap. All right. This is, no. This has been decided. It is written, <laughs> bottle cap. All right. Am I, bottle cap. Was that what was voted? No. So you're... You're really rigging the vote. Oh, well, no, Kylie's vote's worth a lot. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, the votes are in, and my wife has the most electoral votes <laughs> amongst all of the people, and she says bottle cap. I will say, the wheat was only 10% ahead of the bottle cap, so Kylie, Kylie gets 11% of the vote. And yes, she has the most pull in this situation, so uh, yes, bottle cap it is. I kind of started liking the skull with the hops out of his head as brains, but she said, nah. Got I got vetoed on that one. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Nick real fast. All right, I got to go get this camera readjusted, get the, the artist set back up. Had to take a brief break there. You know, they've been, they've been crushing out tattoos for four hours straight. They, they deserve a little break. Appreciate you guys sticking around on the live stream with us during that brief intermission. They are about to get started again here in just a second. And I believe Trevor is going to be up in James's chair up here at the front. Big thank you again to both these artists out here working really hard, crushing through these tattoos. And man, what a great event it's been today. I will say my camera battery is on 14%, so hopefully we can make it through at least some of Trevor's tattoo over here.
There he is. He's coming to the chair right now, getting set up to get the bottle cap. Sorry to all of you who voted to to get the wheat tattoo. You've been overrided. And uh, he was always going to get the bottle cap. Just so you know, that, that election was rigged from the get-go. Bottle cap had a good fight, though, at 30%. So. What were the total numbers? Uh, it was like, I think it was 20% pit viper, 30% bottle cap, 40% wheat. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised Pit Viper didn't get over with Thunder since he wears them all the time. Yeah, I I felt like the Pit Viper tattoo would be the one he would want to get. So how many people have gotten the Honda Seven logo? We don't have an actual tally yet, but on the sign-up sheet there is um, it says what number you get from the flash sheet. So we'll, we will be able to tally it up. We've seen at least eight or nine people with it, so it. I mean, that free draft beer and that, that discount for life, so to say. It adds up over time. Yeah. <laughs> Works out. And thank you, thank you to the people who have uh, gotten the Yucca tattoo on you. That's very bold, as we said before. Did you, sir, get any tattoos today? Did I? No, I did not get any tattoos. Uh, thought about it, but, you know, the line filled up immediately. I mean, right at noon we had... 35 people signed up so just thought it best to sit back and help out our producer with the live stream thank you to Kimball doing all the work behind the scenes over there in California Caleb just walked past with a, a handful of beers. Curious who they're for because uh, I just got myself a beer, so hopefully one of them's not for me. I hope one is for you. Alex says he hopes one is for me. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to be upset if it is for me, but I just have a full beer in my hand and I just want to drink a warm beer is all, I guess. shouted out events throughout the day but I mean can't shout them out enough the adult Easter egg hunt next Saturday yes next Saturday it's gonna be a wild one free free to play just got to be 21 and up never know what's gonna be in those eggs we do have a golden egg out there which has a uh, uh, undisclosed fun to set a prize in there so we're going to be releasing a map of that, where all the egg hunting will go down later this week. So just check our Instagram and our Facebook at Pondaceta. Live music coming up Wednesday and Saturday. Big Bang Theory trivia on Monday. What about you? You guys got any shows going on? Uh, yeah, so we have a show next Saturday. So after you've done Easter egg hunting, uh, come to the, the last Atomic Yellow show ever. 
this this is that uh, end of the world show. end of the world show. Yeah, that's how it's being being named. Yeah. So uh, for those of you in the Amarillo area, the Atomic Yellow is a small mu music venue that opened up this year, and um, due to some city ordinance permit type stuff, they are going to have to shut it down already. So they're doing one last show and should be a good one so get out there it's over on arthur street kind of downtown adjacent should be a good show support all local events yeah just uh just get on get on the old google See what's see what's going on around Amarillo. There's always there's always some good stuff going on around here. Sod poodle season kicks off uh, the first week of April. I know that. Uh, we have we have some cool events coming up in April. We have a pints and pups event in collaboration with Yellow City Pet Supply, as well as a local rescue shelter company, Gracie's Project, that we do. This is going to be our second one. Uh, the first one was really really good success. Uh, just grab your dog, come hang out on the patio, have a couple beers. Yellow City Pet Supply will be out there giving out some little goodie bags for the dogs. Gracie's Project, they, they do wonderf wonderful work um, trying to get dogs uh, rehomed, finding their forever homes, and uh, we're always happy to partner up with them. We're going to have a uh, 420 Munchies menu on April 20th as well as be hosting the Yellow City Comic Con after party on April 20th. So those are a couple cool things coming up in April. We always got something going on. Go to pondesetta.com slash events for a full list and more info of all of this stuff coming up. And it uh, looks like the, the artists are getting set back up and rocking and rolling tattooing again. So. I'm going to take a brief pause, go go check in on the back end of things, and hand the mic back over to Caleb. So uh, Alex and I were just talking about James's physical appearance, as, as is natural. <laughs> hey, James. Um, uh, James is a very fit human being. <laughs> I think that puts it mildly. Um, I have pictures of myself with James, and he doesn't look like the same person that he is today. <laughs> James just said, there have been some changes. Uh, James, how many hours a week do you spend at the gym? Uh, currently, not many at all. <laughs> I try to go like four days a week, but that probably hasn't happened for like a month now. So currently about zero hours at the gym. <laughs> You know, I think our audience is going to find that hard to believe. However, what was your maximum uh, routine? How long were you at the gym weekly when you were at your was, most fit? When I was bodybuilding, I would work out six days a week, sometimes from five to seven. Sometimes I'd work out five days a week, sometimes seven days a week. It was more about the food. I was eating 7,000 calories a day. That's Holy what, shit. That, yeah, that's what made the big difference is to, to get to that that weight and to maintain it, I had to constantly be eating like every two hours throughout the whole day. If I didn't get at least six, 7,000 calories uh, in a day, I was losing weight, so. Uh, I mean, I think Trevor and I can commit to six to 7,000 calories worth of beer a day, like. Yeah, sure. Whatever you gotta do to fill the gaps, man. <laughs> There's a reason my arms look different than yours. <laughs> this is just the leftovers, man. Like, I gotta get back in there. He says it's just the leftovers. All right, Trevor, you ready? I'm ready. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, yeah, I, I have a very high pain tolerance, so. I'm so strong. Well, it's not about being strong, just pain tolerance. All right, so James has uh, put the stencil on his arm. Trevor, as the picky person that he is, made him move it. He suggested it. You don't, it, move, you don't move flash tattoos. I put it where I put it. No. <laughs> I James just joked that we don't move these flash tattoos. But uh, James is uh, a very 
a personable artist and is uh, actually suggested the adjustment so that it hangs out the sleeve just right. Um, it's a small, uh, I mean, I'd say relatively speaking small compared to your other tattoo, Trevor. It's, I mean, a bottle cap about the size of, I don't know, between a quarter and a 50 cent piece. Yeah. So maybe uh, slightly larger than um, an actual real life bottle cap, but, but not by much. I mean, maybe more like um, one of the Magnum, like the 29 mil bottle caps. Magnum. I feel like you wanted to say something else there. If you watch uh, It's Always Sunny, you'll know what the Magnum reference is. But if you don't, you just have to look it up or never know. Um, earlier, our producer did ask us what our favorite TV shows were. And I think it's fair to say that Sunny is one of my all-time favorites. I really enjoyed watching Reacher, and I'm really sad that it's over. He tried out for American Idol. I saw a video about that. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Um, one of those shows that I personally thought I would hate, and then we were watching it, and I immediately was hooked. Did you watch all of it now? Yes, I have finished, finally. Thank you for the suggestion, Caleb and Aaron. But mostly Caleb. <laughs> you know, I think I, I feel personally responsible for, like, directing some of your uh, recreational time. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how you guys watch so much TV, but... Uh... Also, he was in Blue Mountain State as a young man, and that was pretty funny. That one's a good one. Not a lot of people know about. Okay, so what's your favorite scene from Reacher? Because I have a very specific one. I mean, you always talk about the one where the cop's following him, and he just walks over there and freaking kicks his grill, and the airbag goes off, and then he beats the crap out of him. That's a pretty good scene. My personal favorite. You described it to a T. I mean, that dude's a man. But someone said he was short, and I was like, there's no way, because he's taller than all the actors and actresses that are on the show. I think what we know, maybe, without actually looking this up, but is that in Hollywood, people are slightly shorter than we are here. Um, and I, I say that as uh, with a little bit of a, a joke, because uh, Trevor's 6'7", and I'm 6'4", so... Like, you know, we walk into a meeting and everybody's looking up to us uh, a little bit afraid of, like, maybe are we going to get beat up? Like, yeah. but we're just teddy bears. Oh, yeah. I'm a gentle giant. Ready? Let's do it. All right. Trevor is ready to get situated. All right. Trevor is getting in position. It's on the other side of the door. Okay, you guys, um, we're going to try to hook up some charging uh, to our live stream device. Um, so we may have some audio issues, and we could run out of battery here in a minute. But just want to give you guys all a heads up. Trevor's getting prepped. James is about ready to start stabbing him with needles. And I did come up with a couple of cool questions to ask James while I was getting uh, stabbed with needles. Um, so I'm going to try to pivot back to those here in a minute. Um, yes. Uh, hold on just a second, everybody. We're going to get some power situated. Three percent. Three percentile. All right, Nick is getting adjusted um, so he can hook up a power supply here. Hopefully we don't lose everyone, but uh, we really appreciate you guys to uh, tuning in for our first official, like, real serious live stream. Um, we had every intention of going for a couple of hours early on, and, um, you know, here we are at... I was going to say four hours in because we were planning to start at noon, but uh, since we started at noon mountain time, a.k.a. 1 p.m., um, you know, here we are. Uh, so we've got about three hours in. Um, the artists are going strong, dealing with uh, all the normal things you have to do when you're working out of your home environment. So, you know, working in a, a, a little bit less ergonomic environment, um, having to move around our camera that we have set up, having to work with people who aren't used to going into a tattoo studio regularly, too. Um, 
everybody has been great so far and we really appreciate our customers and our clients who have come in to get tattooed. Um, it's a pretty fun event. I, I have to say that like this time has flown by. Okay guys, we are going to uh, make an adjustment here. You're gonna see a camera shake and some audio change. Nick is gonna plug us into some hard power, so the audio is gonna get a little noisier and you're gonna lose my direct feed. So uh, keep going guys and stay tuned. got to turn them off, but it's not recording anything. Right, right, right. Yeah. But we got video. Now they just get to hear the soothing sounds of the brewery. And our camera audio, I guess, which picks up after. So Trevor just said the last time he got uh, a traditional tattoo meeting, before he got his stick and poke tattoo, uh, <laughs> which James literally just left. <laughs> uh, Trevor said he got a little drowsy, but I think it's because it's, I've heard this before, I think I've heard a couple of people say it's almost soothing. Um, I think there is definitely some feeling involved in that. So, so James was just explaining to us that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have heard this term of tattoo therapy, and um, especially in a place that's not super tender, uh, and there are certain areas that are more comfortable than others, for sure. We were talking about it earlier. The elbow is a really uh, painful spot. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but James has his entire skull covered in tattoos, and he said parts of it weren't that bad, but like the very top where you really don't have much uh, tissue, you just have skin on bone, was really uncomfortable. And I'm sure everyone can understand why that might be.
Trevor just said, when we got the first draft of the flash sheets, meaning we got to see the designs from the tattoo artist, from James uh, and Allie, Trevor, Trevor said that the bottle cap resonated with him. Um, and it was just something that, that really clicked and he appreciated that design. I think it feels, if I were to guess, it feels like an homage to earlier days. How do you feel? Like crazy event. Uh, we just had an old friend and regular customer of ours walk through the door and we haven't seen him in a while so that's exciting. I've got some other regulars and uh, close friends coming in too. How are you doing man? Uh, we've got Scott Buchanan, the owner of Yellow Sims Street 2. We're doing a little YouTube live stream. Welcome. Uh, it's cool, we've got friends, we've got family here. Uh, my daughter, who's 13 months old, is walking around on the floor right now. You can't see her. Uh, my wife's here, Trevor's family's here. Uh, we've got some regulars, we've got a full tap room right now. It just is a really incredible feeling. We throw a little bit together. And I say grow a lot. We put a lot of effort and intentionality into this. Lots of planning. We've had multiple meetings. Uh, got everybody sat up with guys. So it's been something we've been trying to put it together and putting a lot of effort into. But still, we put it together and sometimes uh, it's Trevor and I hanging out together. And other times we get a full tap room and a bunch of people who understand uh, you know, what we're going for and really enjoy the event. We've got a bunch of upcoming events. Uh, we're going to have a vision. We have a night for clubs coming up where we're raising money for Grace's Project, which is a local adoption shelter and community, uh, as well as partnering with a local pet food supply place uh, at Yellow City Pet Food. Here on my left, excuse me. Uh, Trevor just said he had three tattoos. He has the very first tattoo on his right. Uh, Trevor has the Honda Seta Yucca in color on the inside of his right bicep. And then he has a stick and bow tattoo on his shoulder, which is his family brand. And now he's getting a bottle cap on his left bicep. Oh, he's got it! Oh my gosh, that was so fast! This is gonna change my mind. I want the weed. Oh no, James said he'd just remove it. Shave it off. We got sandpaper. We got we got nothing. Take a picture. Alright, Trevor, how do you feel? Are you tickling? No. <laughs> not very tickling. I can I mean let's see. <laughs> Trevor just said uh, Alright, we didn't even get to the question I had for James. Part of that's because the audio. Uh, we're gonna keep the screen going for just a minute. But we will be wrapping it up uh, soon. So uh, thanks guys for tuning in. This is Drink and Ink at Montezetta. How you feeling, Trevor? Great. Thanks for watching that. Cheers, and we want to say thanks to the tattoo artist from Eighth Out Tattoo, uh, James Glenn and Alan Bach.
Oh, yeah. 
you guys just want to like walk right here and all that? All right, guys, we're going to be... Oh, wait, I'm not plugged in. Oh. oh, I am plugged in. Hey, guys. All right, apologize for the audio confusion. We're going to start wrapping things up here. Uh, the tattoo event, Drink and Ink, here at Pondicetta, is going to continue going uh, until 6 p.m. tonight. Um, our artists are going to try to work through as many on their list as they can. Um, and we want to say a huge shout out to them. Uh, they both work at 8th Ave Tattoo. We've got Ali Lyles and James Glenn here. Um, they have been busting their asses getting tattoos out. And they have moved through a ton of our list. Um, that being said, we've still got signups going. Or no, we don't have signups going anymore because our signup list is very full. Um, they are working hard to get through as many people as they can. Uh, it's a first come, first serve list and we are working our way through it. Uh, I've been putting flash tattoos uh, out there and they have some really cool flash art. If you guys uh, don't know these artists already, please check them out. Um, we've got Ali Lyles, which is Ali the Great with four T's on Instagram. And I believe it's Sir James the Great with an eight at the end. Trevor just grabbed a fresh beer, and we wanted to just say bye uh, to everybody bye. on camera. Oh, there he is. <laughs> what are we doing? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us here today at Pondicetta Road. Yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I know some of it was probably a little bit boring, and we had some dead space, but I guess we were just, like, enjoying the day. Absolutely. And uh, enjoying getting some tats and watching people getting tattooed. Um, if you're around Amarillo, check out 8th Avenue Tattoo. For sure. Um, Trevor, what would you say your favorite part about this event was? Oh, man, just the fact that, like, so many people turned out. And uh, the list got full in no time. And people are enjoying beers, enjoying the food, and having a great time and just hanging out. I think we learned a ton today. I mean, you know. We had 20 people walk in the door before it was 12.01, uh, getting ready to get tattooed. And we've been moving through this list pretty quickly. Uh, we will absolutely be hosting this event again in the future. Uh, what do you think, probably summer? Yeah, I think in a couple of months, summer will be a great time to do it. Absolutely. Um, our goal is to make it through probably 75 tattoos today. I don't know where we're going to land. We'll keep you guys posted. Uh, I want to say cheers and thank you guys for paying attention to Pondicetta Road uh, and tuning in, tuning in for a live event. Yeah, I mean, this is our first official live event, and we hope to do many more. Um, we love that you guys subscribe and comment and do the polls. Sorry if you voted for Wheat or uh, Pit Vipers. But uh, ultimately, I have to live with my wife, and you don't. So uh, there you go. Uh, I think your electoral college vote was uh, aptly framed. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, we do actually have a second political campaign coming up. Uh, you may get the opportunity to vote on our next core beer. But that's just a teaser. We'll keep you guys posted. A little teaser. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thanks.